Let your holy blessing, guidance, and protection be with us today, particularly in this committee hearing of the Committee on Energy. Guide us with your spirit and wisdom so that all the discussions uh, in this afternoon's committee hearing will be geared towards the strengthening of our of the different institutions subject to this committee hearing and uh, and will redound to the benefit of your people. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the Committee on Energy's meeting. Today, the committee will deliberate on House Resolution number 846. It was authored by no other than our minority leader, Marcelino Nonoy Libanan entitled the resolution urging the Committee on Energy to immediately conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the inefficient operation of Eastern Summer Electric Cooperatives, or SAMELCO, in the province of Eastern Summer. Aside from the high cost of electricity, the province of Eastern Summer endured frequent power outages, fluctuations, and low power voltage supply that inhibit them from effectively performing their socio-economic activities thereby slowing down the continuous development of the province. With this, the committee will look into the cause of these problems and will investigate in aid of legislation on the frequent power outages, fluctuations, and low power voltage supply in the province of Eastern Summer, and at the same time compel the National Electrification Administration and the Energy Regulatory Commission to assist and closely monitor the operations of SMLCO in order to improve its services in the province. I do hope that today's deliberation will produce good results. Again, welcome to the meeting of the Committee on Energy. But before we proceed with the meeting, may I acknowledge the presence of the members joining us in this morning's meeting. We have our minority leader, Marcelino C. Libanan. We have our deputy speaker, Honorable Christine Singson Mihan. We have our uh, deputy minority leaders, uh, the, the DML Presley C. De Jesus our DML, uh, Honorable Franz L. Castro, and our Assistant Minority Leader, Honorable Sergio C. Dago-Oak. Also with us is our former colleague and now Undersecretary of the DOE, Yusek Sharon Karin. And now may I request the sec Committee Secretary to acknowledge the presence of the resource persons in today's meeting. Comsec. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, may I acknowledge the resource persons present in this uh, afternoon's meeting. From the Department of Energy, Mr. Rodel Limbaga, Supervising SRS, Energy Power Industry Management Bureau. From the Energy Regulatory Commission, Attorney Ralph Jefferson Pagia, Attorney for Investigation and Enforcement Division for Adjudication Regulatory Operations Service. Engineer Ranilo Maatubang, Engineer for Standards Division, Regulatory Operations Service. Attorney Beatrice Angela Catral, Attorney 3. From the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, Legal Counseling Assistant General Counsel, Office of the General Counsel, Attorney Lali Maliari, ACC Power Dispatch Supervisor, Visayas System Operations, System Operations, Mr. Ildebrando Fajardo, Regional Transmission Planning Manager, Transmission Planning Department, Planning and Engineering, Mr. Michael Bailosis, District Manager, Visayas Operations and Maintenance, Operations and Maintenance, Mr. Ricardo G. Lozano. From the Eastern Summer Electric, Electric Cooperative, Technical Services Department Manager, Engineer Greg Lim It, Corporate Division Chief, Ms. Ayesa Grace Abing, CPA. From the Esamelco Board of Directors, Board President, Mr. Reynaldo Herna, Esamelco General Manager, Attorney Jose Michael Edwin Amancio. Eastern Summer Local Government Units, uh, Mayor. Vilma Hermino, Can Avid, Eastern Summer, Mayor Annalisa Gonzalez Quan, Giwan, Eastern Summer, Mayor Gina T, Taf, Eastern Summer. From the National Association of General Managers of Electric Cooperatives, President G General Manager Alan Laniba. From the Philippine Rural Electric Cooperatives Association, Attorney Janine Depay Kulingan. Uh, attending via Zoom from Taf Hydro, Mr. Benji Picardo. Consumer Representative, Mr. Edilberto Grata, Sr. Attorney from the Bureau of Internal Revenue, 
Revenue Region 14, Attorney Vincent Taddy, Attorney Karen Siaincon, Attorney Brianna K. De Los Santos, and uh, Ms. Josephine Katamko. That's all, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. Uh, but before we proceed to the hearing proper, may I just acknowledge the presence of our members who are present via Zoom. We have uh, Vice Chairperson Jefferson F. Konghun, Vice Chairperson Edgar D. L. Salvame, Vice Chairperson Tirso Edwin L. Gargiola. We also have here present uh, Vice Chairperson Arnie Fintabella. We have uh, Assistant Majority Leader Wawa Fortes Jr., Assistant Majority Leader Anna Victoria Veloso Tuazon, Assistant Majority Leader Francisco Paulo P. Ortega. We have Assistant Minority Leader Jonathan Clement M. Abalos II. We have Honorable Ramon Rodrigo L. Gutierrez, Honorable Zaldi S. Villa, Honorable Rachel Marguerite B. Delmar, Honorable Ambrosio C. Cruz, Honorable James Jojo A. Ang Jr., and Honorable Lyodi Odi F. Tariela. So before we begin our deliberation, we will give the author the opportunity to sponsor his resolution. May we now call on Minority Leader Marcelino Libanan for his sponsorship of House Resolution Number 846. Minority Leader Libanan, you are now recognized. Thank you very much. Uh... Our uh, chairman, Lord Alan Velasco, who happens to be our former speaker of this house. And uh, uh, before I proceed, I would like to greet uh, those who are in attendance, the members of Congress who are here, and all our resource persons, uh, our mayors also, Mr. Samar, who, who are here, and uh, Yusek Sharon Garin, who, who was with us uh, before and now still with us. Uh, Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, I filed Resolution 846 uh, para makita natin kung bakit nangyayari ito sa ating bansa. Ang uh, uh, ginawa nating pilot area ay ang Eastern Summer dahil ito ang isa sa pinakamataas na cost of electricity. Ang uh, per kilowatt hour umaabot tayo ng 15.09 na pakataas. Ikumpara natin sa 11 pesos sa uh, uh, Metro Manila at ang uh, commercial rate natin ay uh, 13 pesos plus, mataas pa rin. So, pag ganung depressed uh, province, malayo na, mahirapan pa ang mga tao kaya ang mangyayari ay out migration na lang at uh, dahil sa inefficiency of service, gusto nating malaman ito bakit Panay ang brownout, low voltage, at uh, uh, yung transmission lines hindi pa na naayos. Sino ba talaga ang may responsibilidad dito para maayos po ito? At lalong hindi natin maintindihan dahil sa Region 8, nandun ang uh, geothermal power plant na mura naman ang pagbenta ng kuryente at doon sa bayan namin ni Mayor Gina T ng Taft Eastern Summer na uh, lately pinasila namin ni uh, Attorney Amancio ay nandoon yung Taft Hydro uh, Power Plant. At ang pagkaalam namin, nagbebenta doon ng 5 pesos and 7 centavos sila pero hindi tayo makakuha sa isang melko. At ang isamil ko ay iba ang, ang uh, source ng uh, kanilang power. Ang gusto nating uh, makita ngayon sa inquiry na ito ay bakit nagkakaganito? Bakit uh, 15.09 uh, pesos per kilowatt hour? Ano ba ang mga charges dito? Saan napupunta ang mga ito? At ano ang pwedeng gawin ng kumite na imediate na mapababa ang presyo ng kuryente sa Eastern Samar at hindi lang sa Eastern Samar. Pwede kung anong gagawin natin dito, pwede rin itong kopyahin ng Northern Samar na ganun din, parehas din ang problema. At sa tingin ko po, hindi lang ito nangyayari sa amin, pero all over uh, the Philippines, mayroong ba nitong sitwasyon, Mr. Chairman? At uh, ano ang obligasyon dito ng NGCP? Uh, at uh, nung uh, may hearing din kami sa minority na pag-alaman namin 
yung mga taxes dito, napakaraming tax na uh, ipinapataw, pero instead na issue shoulder ng, uh, ng, mga, ng NGCP, ng distribution, ng transmission, ng kooperatiba, ay pinapasa pa rin lahat ng taxes sa consumers uh, na sa ibang bansa ay sinusubsidize na natin, Mr. Chairman, ang power dahil napakalaking bagay po ito sa pag-develop ng isang lugar. Pero sa, sa ating bansa, isa na tayo sa pinakamataas sa Southeast Asia, pero uh, pinatax pa na, natin multiple, kumbaga multiple taxation. At uh, sana po ay nandito ang taga-BIR natin para mag-explain din po dito. Kaya Mr. Chairman, nagpapasalamat po ako na binigyan tayo ng pagkakataon kahit malapit na tayong mag-synergy ay uh, talagang pinahalagan po ito ng ating uh, Committee on Energy na pinamungunahan ni uh, Chairman Lord Alan Velasco. Thank you po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Minority Leader Libanan. Uh, may his uh, sponsorship speech be included or part of the records. Uh, before we proceed, uh, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of our lovely mayors who are here pala. Uh, Honorable Vilma Her Hermino from Can Avid Eastern Summer. Welcome po, ma'am. Si Honorable Gina A.T., uh, mayor ng Taft Eastern Summer. And Honorable Annalisa gonzalez Quan, the mayor of Gian Eastern... Gian, is that correct? Gian? G1. Para napadaan yata ako dyan... Minority leader nung nagmotor kami, I think I remember passing through some of your towns when I passed by Eastern Summer. So proceeding, uh, I believe we will now give our stakeholders an opportunity to hear their comments and presentations on the measure. Uh, may we request the resource persons to limit your comments to five minutes to give the other resource persons a chance to manifest their comments. So first, to make it... Uh, Comments. Let's start with the the electric cooperative first. Uh, I would like to recognize Attorney Jose Michael Edwin S. Amancio, the general manager manager of SMLGO. Sir, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, and to our honorable uh, uh, members of the Congress. Uh, First, uh, we agree, actually, Mr. Chair, to the observation of the Honorable uh, Minority Uplord Leader, leader uh, regarding the high cost of electricity, constant interruption, uh, problem in transmission, uh, which uh, affects the growth of the province no? and affecting also the consumers. No? Uh, it reflects in our records when you have a high cost of electricity, our collection is uh, affected also. So, uh, masyado pong complicated itong ating energy loss, no? Uh, number one observation I mean is the cost of power is uh, affecting, is coming from the generation, no? Na side. Uh, because on the part of the electrical, itong DSN, distribution supply and marketing, mostly peaks na po yon since 2009. It's only around 2 pesos, no? Plus itong uh, reinvestment fund of uh, around 40 centavos per kilowatt hour. Then the transmission is also high uh, because of the long lines, uh, also contributing to the generation. No? Once matas ang generation po, ang presyo ng system loss, taxes, nag-multiply din. No? So, ganun po yung trickle effect nun. Hopefully, with this uh, HB 846, uh, some of these problems pointed out by the Honorable uh, uh, Congressman Libana will be resolved. And uh, hopefully, uh, the power supply in Eastern Summer, no? Isa, ito kasi example na napakalay talaga, Eastern Most, bagyuhin pa, na sana matulungan natin mapaibaba yung presyo ng kuryente at mapaganda po yung servisyo. Ganun din po. Sa ayong, sa ayong kami po sa kay Kong Libanan na observation. Thank you, Attorney Amansha. For reminder to the members that uh, uh, let us uh, give the resource persons a chance first to finish with their comments before we start with the interpolations of the resource persons. Thank you. 
Uh, next, uh, if there's no other person who's going to uh, give a comment from SMLCO, is that okay already with SMLCO? Okay. Uh, NGCP, can we hear from NGCP? Um, good afternoon, Sorry. Your Honors. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yes. um, I would like to apologize that I am participating um, virtual. Um, I, this morning, um, this weekend, um, Your Honors, I do have flu-like symptoms. So for everyone's um, safety, I, I, um, I chose to participate online. Um, Your Honors, in so far as um, House Resolution 846, we have no further comments. Um, and that uh, we will be, we are uh, willing to work with SMLCO, Your Honor, to address their concerns um, on this matter, Your Honors. Thank you. Thank you, National Grid. Uh, can we hear from Nea, Deputy Administrator Attorney Omar Mayo? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the honorable members of this committee. As the supervisor of all electric cooperatives, including Isamelco, we are one with the sponsor as well as NGCP and the electric cooperative that the service should be improved if there is a need for improvement and that NEA is work, uh, willing to work with all the stakeholders in order to further improve the uh, services of the electric cooperative. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nia. Uh, can we hear from the ERC? Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Your Honor. Uh, with regards to the uh, ERC, Your Honor, uh, as per record, Your Honor, uh, Isamelco uh, has been complying with the standard, but unfortunately for other uh, uh, reportorial requirements, uh, they have not uh, submitted, Your Honor. That's the problem with, uh, with Isamelco. But in terms of the uh, standard, uh, they are compliant except for in 2022, in terms of voltage uh, power quality, uh, the uh, beyond the allowed uh, voltage variation set by the Commission. Your thank you, ERC. May we now hear from our Eastern Summer Local Government Units? Uh, who wants to go first, Paul, ma'am? Would, would our uh, mayors uh, give a little comment as to the issue that is being discussed today? Honorable Annalisa, yes. Good afternoon, Honorable Chairman. Good afternoon, the Minority Leader and Honorable Members of this committee, uh, stakeholders, fellow uh, mayors, everyone, good afternoon. I am the municipal mayor of Giwan. If there is a place in the Philippines that can contribute to the economic development of this country and to food security, it should be Giwan. Giwan is located at the southernmost tip of Summer Island and the easternmost of the Philippines. It is a historical place. Magellan first landed in Giwan. It was a U.S. naval base during the Second World War. In fact, we have an airport, a 2.8 kilometers airport that we do not use, <laughs> that can be used if given the chance. And uh, it, was the it was the biggest uh, refugee camp of the white Russians from 1949 to 1951. Uh, Giwan is a protected area marine seascape. It is a marine protected area under e Pass, And uh, it is the biggest municipality in the province of Eastern Summer. We cannot take off. We remain poor because of our problem in power, especially in the southern part of the province, of course, which include Giwan. Kami kasi po yung katapusan. 
what is our problem? First problem is the power interruptions. In fact, before coming here, maraming beses po nag-brown out doon sa amin. The low voltage, 150, 160. Lahat na po nagre-reklamo, lahat ng kanilang mga appliances na sisira po. And of course, the high power rate. Yung rate ko po last month was 15.71 per kilowatt hour. And this month, it's 15.15. Uh, .15. I'd been asking Isamel ko, calling to my office regarding this problem. Sabi po nila, it is because NGCP did not or cannot put up a substation or a transmission line in that in our location because Giwan is a dead end. Unlike in other areas like in Borongan or other places that is, uh, other cooperatives can connect northern summer, south, uh, western, and eastern. Sa amin po, dagat na po, wala pong ibang magkukonect. Kaya mukhang wala po silang plano maglagay sa amin. And uh, it is uh, 33 kilometers from where the substation is. It is 33 kilometers or more or less 34 kilometers. Sabi po nila, yun ang reason kung bakit low voltage at saka madalas po daw mag-brown out. Uh, with this reasoning, it is clearly, it is clearly business, not, uh, not service. Until when shall we suffer? We have a potential. Kiwa na sa potential. Hanggang kailan po kami magsasuffer? Kailan po aangat ang buhay namin? To think that there are four municipalities. I, cannot, I can only speak of the South because I am from the South. Ay, nandito naman po yung dalawang mayors sa North. Which I believe mayroon pong mga around 30,000 households ang affected. You know, Giwan is a very big potential in tourism. We are a supplier of fish. In fact, yung mga isda na dadadala sa Manila, sa Cebu, and other places, galing po sa amin yun. Kaya nga po, marine protected area po ang Giwan. Kahit ice plant po, wala kami. Kasi ang dami na po mga investors na pumupunta sa amin, pag nakikita nila yung sitwasyon ng Isamelco, mabak out po sila. And we have, and to think that uh, fishing is the number one livelihood of the people, and we can supply fish. Kaya lang po, saan naman pa paano, how can we store it when we do not have the ice plant and the cold storage? After Yolanda po, yung UNDP po, gumawa po ng storage sa Giwan, kaya lang hindi namin magamit kasi po, napakamahal. It's, uh, it's, very, uh, it's very impractical to use the cold storage. So hanggang ngayon po, wala. So anong ginagawa po ng mga fish dealers? We have to travel 150 kilometers to Tacloban or to Santa Rita to buy ice para lang po ma magkaroon, kumbaga ma maano yung mga isda. So uh, that, 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 that cost a lot and it's, very, it's a big inconvenience. Kaya wala pong nag invest Giwan is a surfing destination. Napakaganda po ng Giwan. It's a surfing destination. It can even over, uh, surpass Siargao. Kasi Siargao, maliit lang yung surfing area nila. Kami, napakahaba. That's 7 kilometers. Kaya lang, we do not have the facilities. Walang mga hotels na nag invest talaga. Kasi napakamahal po. Napakamahal po ng, ng power. So, investors, fair to trade sa giwan po due to the power problems. Um, water also. Our water system is also affected. Kasi lahat ng mga yung, yung, yung ano ng, ng water system namin, ng giwan water district, nasira na lahat ng kanilang mga pump, pumps because of the low voltage. So pag nag-low voltage, walang power po ang buong giwan. So anong kinagawa po ng giwan water district? Bumili po sila ng mga generating sets, ge uh, generators, and it is very costly to maintain gen sets, and it is not sustainable. So yung po talaga ang problema namin. If we will be given the chance, again, sasabihin ko, that Kiwan can contribute 
can be a big contributor to the economic uh, development of this country in terms of tourism and in terms of food security. Sana po naman, mga, uh, ang NGCP naman po, bigyan naman po kami ng chance. Doon po sa plano nila, tinanong ko sa Isamel ko, Mukuti pa po yung nor northern part of eastern Samar. By 2030, may plano na nila. Pero sa amin po, sa southern part, mukhang wala po. <laughs> Kaya uh, I am appealing to in GCP to please construct the 69 kilovolt uh, substation or transmission line so that the lives of the people in our area will be improved and they will have that quality of life. Thank you very much po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Annalisa gonzalez Kwan. Before we proceed, may I just recognize the presence of our uh, Deputy Minority Leader, Honorable Lex Anthony Chris A. Colada, our Assistant Minority Leader, Honorable Arlene D. Brosas. We also have Honorable Filimon M. Espares, and uh, also Honorable Maria Rene Andoides G. Matibag. Now, can we hear from Mayor of uh, Taft, Eastern Summer, Honorable Gina A.T.? And of course, to our, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. And of course, to our ma minority leader, Honorable Congressman Marcelino Lindibadan. And of course, the stakeholders. And uh, kasama ko din yung mga L LCA. Uh, I'm from TAF, Eastern Summer. Uh, isa po din siyang uh, coastal areas, the uh, 24 barangays, a fourth class municipality. Uh, Ganyan din po yung problem namin na sinasabi ni uh, Mayor Annalisa. Uh, actually, uh, yung municipality po namin ang mayroon ngayon, uh, top, uh, top hydro. And then, yan po yung concern namin na bakit po hindi yung isamil ko uh, naka, uh, nakabili ng, ng uh, power. So sana po uh, mabigyan ng ng uh, pagkakataon na uh, yung Eastern Summer mapokus po yung uh, yung and yung kuryente. So hopefully uh, this uh, year or the other years na mabigyan po ng uh, ng uh, action yung aming uh, Western Summer, of course, sa, pang sa pangunguna ng aming uh, minority leader. Thank you po. Thank you, Honorable Gina A.T. from Taft Eastern Summer. And can we hear from Mayor Vilma Hermino from Canavid Eastern Summer? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So our minority leader at saka yung presiding officer natin. Lahat ng mga stakeholders na nandito, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, Unang-una, ako po ay first term as municipal mayor of Ganawid Eastern Samar na mayroong 28 barangays. Uh, ngayon, natutuwa ako at saka uh, ipinagmamalaki ko at sinasabi ko sa inyo dahil yung, dahil yung municipal Yung munisipyo namin ay talaga napakaluma na at dahil kay Congressman Nonoy Libanan ay inanun niya sa akin na magpapatayo siya ng municipal building sa Kanawid worth ng, ng 30 million at saka dyan sa malapit sa municipal building na papatayuan ay tapat yan ng, ng university, Eastern Summer State University. At saka mayroong ano, potential din dyan ng mga, ng, ng magkaroon ng mga, mga investors dahil mayroon dyan dapat namin, mayroon kaming dapat lagyan dyan ng, ng hide opo para magkaroon ng, ng, ano yung mga ng ang ang magkaroon ng 
hydroelectric power yung yung ano namin yung bayan namin so ngayon pa lang ano sinasabi ko na dapat maaksyunan agad at saka para maka matugunan ang mga pangailangan ng mga tao namin doon sa Eastern Samar. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Mayor Vilma Hermino. Uh, proceeding, let, let us hear from, from our consumer representative, Mr. Edilberto Grata Sr. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the Minority Leader of the House of Representatives and uh, members of the House. I would, be, I would like to thank this opportunity for having been invited to this forum. An opportunity for us to perhaps to comment and to provide information. What should be the best solution from the perspective of the consumers as to how Isamelco is managing the affairs of the cooperative? It has been uh, for a long time na palaging NGCP ang, if, ang sagot ng Isamelco doon sa issue ng power or uh, outages and doon sa issue ng uh, transmission. I have not heard of anything that Isamelco would somehow create some uh, proactive measures in addressing the issues as raised by the Honorable Minority Leader. For this, Mr. Chair, we would like to thank uh, the House of Representatives for this initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Grata Sr. So can you also hear from Nagmec? Nagmec, I think GM Alan Laniba is here. Thank you. Zoom? Uh, yes. I am here. Uh, Any comments, sir? Yes, yes, sir. I want to give a little comment on the issue. Thank you so much, uh, former speaker Alan, my Tukayo, and to all the members of this committee and the mayors who are attending, to all of us, good afternoon. As to the issue of Brown out, we keep on telling in every forum that it could not be only be blamed to one sector because the intricacy of power industry is divided into four. The generation, the transmission, distribution, and in some areas, there are retailers. So as far as power interruption is concerned, we need to consider to look at the parameters because all of us, we have our parameters to measure whether we achieve that uh, standard set forth by the agency. Sample, in the power interruption, there is that side side imposed by NEA and even in, in ERC, we are submitting that side side parameters, the system uh, I know, uh, duration of uh, power interruption, index, and the other one is the duration. So, if for me, if Isamelco were able to get a triple A status in AIA, and therefore it is expressly understood that as far as parameters on site side is concerned, Isamelco uh, attained that parameters. That's why, Mr. Chair, we'd like to look into, example, in low voltage, uh, we should look into if the voltage when it was transmitted is 69 then uh, we cannot say that it's the, the problem is in the transmission. Because sometimes if the power transmitted to the electric cooperative is already low voltage because of some problem in transmission, of course, it is expressly understood that when distributed it to every household, it is already in low voltage. That's why I, I think the committee because we have invited all of us here, uh, the transmission, the distribution, as far as generation is concerned, that will pertain to rates. Because in transmission, it is fixed. The DSM is fixed uh, through ERC. What will vary is the generation. As to region 8, what happened when there was a bidding of the trans, uh, generation at the time, uh, itong tumunan po uh, for information, which is 700, Megawatt 
one of the biggest geothermal power plant not only in the Philippines but in Asia supposedly uh, they, they did not participate because that time mura masyado yung coal so it was coal uh, producer or coal fuel power plant won the bidding with only 3 pesos and 26 centavos but nung dumating itong 20s 2021 something like that pumalo yung presyo ng coal and isa milko as far as i know uh, kasali doon pag bid ng generation na yan at yung coal fuel power plant niya ang nakontrata nila that's why they are affected into that so only two electric cooperatives in the, the region 8 ang nakakontrata ng geothermal diyan sa tungunan it's only Lieko 2 in Tacloban and my electric cooperative Lieko 3 all others because of that bidding the time had a contract with a power plant which is fueled by coal so that would answer the question o bakit nagmahal yung kuryente it's because coal nga at least nga ngayon bumaba and bumaba na yung coal mabo talaga yan siya ng ng 19 another thing to consider in Isamelco kasi kapitbahay din namin yun ito yung typhoon belt 18 times dadaan yung bagyo diyan sa eastern summer talaga in every year so mangyayari sa kanila diyan repair ng repair ng repair and then, siyempre, yung finances nila, mauubos talaga. Biruin mo yung mag-a-average ng 18 typhoons na dadaan dyan. Pagpalagay mo lang 2 or 10. And then, yung ECRF na it was promulgated by Congress, and we are congratulating Congress for uh, ano, promulgating that, we're not able to suffice for every typhoon na tatama sa electric cooperative. Dahil hindi lang naman ang isang mail ko yung tinatamaan, kundi marami pa. So ito din isang factor na it contribute to this performance of Isamel Kobat, uh, uh, me as the regional president in the GM, the national president, I can vouch that Atorre Amansu is doing everything to improve the performance and services of Isamel Kobat. And we are hoping that NGCP will join us and this committee will join us also and Congressman Libanan will help us also because after all, we are working for the people and by working the people, we are serving the interests of this nation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, GM Laniba. Uh, but before we proceed, let me acknowledge the presence also of uh, Deputy Majority Leader Wilter Y. Palma. Uh, proceeding, can we hear from Attorney Depay Kolingan from Filreca? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the rest of the members of the Honorable Committee. For Phil Retka, we would like to uh, state that uh, we support the uh, Itamelco in their position and suggestions on how to handle the concerns and issues raised before the uh, areas covered by their franchise area. And of course, we also support the purpose of the author of this resolution, Honorable uh, Libanan, eh, to uh, come up with the remedies on how to address the power issues and concerns in Itamelco. At least cast by uh, GM Alan Laniba, we also go with their suggestion and uh, that the field PILRECA will be in support to all the stakeholders to address the concerns of uh, the power uh, concerns in the metro area. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney Kalingan. So, since there's no more comments, uh, let us now proceed to the interpolation of our resource persons. Uh, first, to make it uh, Interpolation, of course, is the sponsor, the author of uh, of the House bill. Uh, may I now recognize Honorable Minority Leader Libanan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to 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 ask questions based on on the bill. Where first would like to know why there is a very high price in. Uh, per kilowatt hour of Isamelco. Second, why is it always low voltage? And third, why is there frequent brownouts? So, uh, uh, and uh, I hope uh, with your answer, you will also give your recommendations to solve this problem so that we can shorten the work of uh, the committee. 
So uh, I would like to ask first, Attorney Jose Michael Amancio, can you explain to us, please, uh, why is there very high price in uh, in uh, per kilowatt hour pricing of uh, Isamelco? Attorney Amancio, please answer. Thank you. Uh... Uh, from the sponsor, uh, the Honorable uh, Minority uh, Floor Leader. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, in 2019, the price of uh, Isamelco, in which we were supplied by PISAL, is only around 8 pesos. Uh, we have given a copy of the members of the uh, committee on this. 2020, it was only 7 pesos. Then in 2021, uh, GNPD, I think, started to supply us. Uh, from their other plants, but the GNP, the Batana is not dingin, it's not yet completed. Then in 2022, uh, that's the time when the price of the generation charge has uh, spiked and uh, it has uh, up to the present in, in which the price currently is around 15 pesos. The highest in 2022 was uh, for Isamelco is 17. 0.91 pesos per kilowatt hour, Mr. Chen. Uh, it's only generation charge. Uh, DSM has been as labeled to two pesos only per kilowatt hour since 2009, and there was no change. We are only had uh, an increase in the demand and the energy sold by the Isamelco is the one helping Isamelco to have its DSM uh, used in its operation and maintenance. But the bulk of this uh, tariff rate uh, with the highest is 17.9 comes from the generation companies. We are only a pass-on entity. We pass on only the rates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, <clears throat> the resource person said that uh, it is spiked on 2022. Yes, to uh, 17, then now it's 15 per kilowatt hour, 15 pesos per kilowatt hour. Like you tell us why and what, what is the reason that uh, this happened? What are the factors that influence this high price? Yes, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the, the price, uh, uh, the main contributor is the coal fired power plant. At the time, uh, the price of the imported coal per ton uh, rose up from $100 per ton to $300 or even $500. Then you have the, we have the uh, dollar peso depreciation. And of course, the third is the fuel cost because you have to haul or to ship the coal through uh, use of diesel fuel uh, shipping. So there are those are the factors, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, GNPD is our main supplier. Uh, the public bidding by the Region Eight Electric Ops, Eleven Electric Ops, that there was an ag aggregation for that procurement, is was in 2014 for 150 megawatts. Then the plant uh, started in 2022. So, Mr. Chair. Uh Yes, sir. Yes. The the aver the generation cost of the EC in twenty twenty one was five point six. Tapos bigla siya ng eight point two on twenty twenty two, sir. Na um they started a contract with coal on twenty twenty one. If I'm not mistaken, sir, is that uh, correct? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, in uh, 2021, we still have a mix of PISAL. So we we're able to procure 12 megawatts from PISAL at the so time. Uh, PISAL, yes. So they, which purchased, is geothermal. they purchased cheap, but then there was an increase in coal prices. Yes. So there were uh, readjustments. In July 22, the PISAL management of the geothermal plants expired. So that's the time we were exposed to the market. So, ali sila sa contract nila with coal. Uh, Honorable Libanan, le, le, uh, if I may interject lang sandali. Sir, sorry, ilan ang ano, uh, ilang megawatts ang ano nyo, kailangan nyo supply? 
uh, the peak demand of Isamelco is on uh, is 23 megawatts. Then yeah. our mm -hmm. contracted energy with uh, GNPD is only 15 megawatts. We still have uh, eight megawatts uncontracted. Send your circuit of 8 megawatts. Uh, we usually procure it from the WSM market. WSM. Yes, because uh, it's a peak hour uh, requirement or intermediate oh. load. During daytime, there are some peaks. Then at nighttime, it's really high peak. Mm. Okay. So, ang low nyo, sir, nasa 15 megawatts lang. Tas nag yes. Increase siya ng 8 megawatts during peak? Yes. Uh -huh. That's why you opt to get your energy supply from WSM na lang. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we also procured from Bisalm 12 megawatts, but it expired in July. We used to blend it with the coal. When the coal uh, spiked, we, uh, the Bisalm 12 megawatts was able to uh, help reduce. But after that expiration, it's all coal, coal plant. So you said Garin a while ago was saying that uh, in 2020, you the, the PSA was at 5 pesos and then it increased to 7 or 8 pesos, I think. Yes. Is that because of the rise in coal prices of the U Ukraine-Russian war? Yes, Mr. Chair. And now, what's the status? Is it going down already? Uh, I believe actually there is a very, very small uh, minimal reduction. We are still at around 15 pesos per kilowatt hour. Wow. Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would like to ask, uh, how many years are you locked up with uh, GNPD, with your contract? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we are, uh, the contract is up to 2041, 20 years. This is a very long time, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, please take note, it's 20, 20 years up to 20, 2041. Now, may I ask, uh, because it appears to me that there is a fluctuating uh, price be because you stated before that before it was 17 pesos per kilowatt hour and now it's 15. Who determines the price if you are locked up with that uh, for 20 years? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the price is uh, given to us by GNPD. Then uh, we Based, their, based on their statement account, we just uh, compute, consider it in our computational tariff, then pass on to the consumers. So you just take it hook, line, and sinker, yes, whatever yes. the charge of you. Yes, Mr. This Chair. That's the reason why. You, why did you lock it up for 20 years? Actually, Mr. Chair, in 2014, when there was uh, the aggregation, the rate at that time is only around 3 pesos and 50 centavos around that uh, the generation charge so we're not able to anticipate this uh, but this of course crisis. there's that 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 agreement of yours that uh, you agree with fluctuation of prices so you are not locked up with a specific price yes the mr chair and that, you're taking it to hook line and sinker the, mr chair the price being uh, passed on to us is the price of the coal in uh, international market based on a new castle they have a reference for that new castle i think have you tried to, to file a protest in favor of the consumers? Actually, Mr. Because Chair, this is too high. And you're locked up for 20 years and you, don't, you just take it as is? Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Thank you, Manononoy. Thank you, Bayan. Una, salata. Papasalamat ako na ilimbinta niyo yung isamil ko para yung mga na-encounter na problema with regards to rate, power outages, at saka low voltage, magkaroon ng solusyon. Eh, pa dito, tungkol naman sa high rates, ano, nag-protest kami sa NG, eh, ano, GMPD, yung sa uh, ano na, generation charge. Una-una, in, in, ang ina, eh, tinatanong namin kung magkano ba ang naging kontrata nila sa pagpili ng coal. Kasi ang, ang, ang nangyayari dyan, binibigyan na lang kami ng bill. Which is kung ano ang eh, inano sa amin, yun ang ipinapasun namin sa 
sa consumer. Ngayon, ang ina eh, tinatanong namin kung magkano ba binibili ni GMPD sa supplier nila. Paano ba nila ginagawa yung rate? Yung ibinibil sa amin. Para din naman kami, malaman nila, kung malaman ng isang milko kung magkano na supposed to be. Sana magawa ng paraan yan, matingnan yan, kung ano, ang, kung how many years na nagkaroon ng kontrata sa si CDMPD, halimbawa kung may contract siya sa, sa, ano, sa Indonesia, kasi ngayon ang nagsusupply siguro sa CDMPD, yung Indonesia. For how many years ang naging kontrata, tapos kung magkano. Para naman kami, makompute namin siguro. Kung, kasi hindi namin alam kung magkano talaga ang nagiging importation cost ng uh, GMPD, ng coal. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, at, at, at this point, I would like to, to propose to the committee possibly we can review the contract and also for uh, Isamelco to, to uh, look at other means where maybe if it stays at that price, uh, you can back out from that contract because it's you're locked up up to up to 2040 2041 and what will happen to you if if the prices of coal would would further increase what will happen to our consumers i think uh there 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 is that uh, we can have that provision that if it is uh, beyond the, the capacity of the consumers then we we can back out from that uh Another thing, Mr. Chairman, we have the Taft Hydro uh, Electric in Taft Eastern Samar. We have all these uh, rivers in almost all our municipalities where we can develop. Our people cannot understand why we are not buying from this Taft Hydro. Uh, I think uh, Taft Hydro is capable of supplying up to 10 uh, megawatts. So can you can you explain to us why 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 did you not take uh, a contract from them so that there will be no more uh, transmission tra charges and uh, you you get it directly from the source? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair. Actually, we are uh, ongoing uh, competitive selection process. Uh, we plan to bid out four megawatts for the increase. Uh, we anticipate that the plant will be completed by 2024 20, summertime, March or May. So that's uh, one of our options. Then the, the existing uh, plant of uh, uh, Hydro, which is 16 megawatts, is uh, already locked on pit in tariff uh, with the Department of Energy. Uh, uh, as earlier discussed also, uh, we would like to consult the Department of Energy on that. If the existing plant, the pit in tariff, can is a Melco uh, swap uh, or procure that pit in tariff uh, 16 megawatts, part of that, uh, at for for its uh, power supply. In effect, the pit in tariff will, uh, let's say, three megawatts will be transferred to Isamelco. Then whatever the agreement as to pit in tariff. They say it still have a contract of 15 years at 580. We are willing to, to agree with that rate or that supply for them in, as part of. Mr. Chair. Yes, Honorable Dago. Uh, can I interject? No? Uh, pwede paliwanag mo, Jim, kasi that is the term is very technical. Ang ibig mo bang sabihin sa nakalak up sa feed in tariff ay hisa, nakahisa siya ngayon with Transco? Paki-explain sa kanila. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, pit in tariff is an agreement between the power generator and the Department of yes. Energy. Uh -huh. Now, the pit in uh, tariff is passed on to the consumers, let's say, in the Visayas. Yes. Yes, all the consumers pay for it. Yes, in accordance with Renewable Energy Act. Uh, yes, okay. 9513. So, yun, kaya nakalakin siya, kaya mag-usap kayo niyan. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, nandito naman ang ating undersecretary for uh, the Department of Energy, ang ating kaibigan na uh, kasama si Yusik Sharon Garin. Yung, uh, anong tawag doon? Fit in tariff? Fit in tariff. Fit in tariff. Fit in tariff. Uh, can can uh, isa, uh, Isamel ko get uh, from the Taft Hydro? Uh... Yeah. Sir, um, Chair, 
they're actually locked in for up to 41 you know you need to renegotiate that also that's only for 15 megawatts we still have uh, 8 megawatts actually my 8 megawatts but you also i think i saw that you also have a contract with kepco and edc kepco is only an emergency because of the spike of the prices last year so we have to yes epsa emergency uh, will expire this july or september the embedded uh, um i've been reminded by congressman dago of the revisit the uh, circular which limits it at uh and when okay so IRR yan, na for electric co-ops we're only allowed 50 uh 50 percent sa demand namin but that's not their hydro bibili lang sila yung 50 kasi kung ang co-op mismo mag-develop yes sir we will uh uh check with the co-op and have you talk to the doe and erc and uh also to the hydro power plant. Pag-usapan natin magkakasama. Because I don't know if they have obligations already, the hydro power plant. It's it's it unfortunate lang, Chair, because Eastern Summer is actually one of the most progressive in terms of production in renewable energy. They have 20% hydro and upcoming around 10%. Again, if I'm not mis... I, th I was with a minority leader. They have more more coming on the same developer of uh, solar. So practically the renewable can cover all the needs of uh, Eastern summer already, despite the fact, all, although it's intermittent, no? Pero kain kain. So, uh, but then it's intermittent, uh, so they need the base load pa. Um, ang ano lang, Mr. Chair, is I think uh, since, since, the co-op is aware that the increase is basically the generation and we cannot go and question their how they calculate but i think we can uh, erc is willing to help to renegotiate if it's possible because many cooperatives have done it already mr chair so mr chairman uh, the uh, undersecretary sharon garin volunteered to help isamelco to renegotiate because uh, uh, renegotiate you. with your contract because uh, you are, we, it is up to 20, 2041, I think. It's too long. We are only in 2023 now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I and uh, this representation and uh, the Honorable Undersecretary Sharon Garin uh, went to Taft to uh, have a groundbreaking on the solar project of Taft Hydro. Uh, I was informed that uh, the uh, project one is capable of supplying 16 megawatts and project two is around, uh, I think, uh, 15 megawatts and the solar project is capable of supplying 20 megawatts so that all in all, it is more than what, what Eastern Summer needs. It is more than 50 megawatts, but how about if we cannot get our electric current from, from those areas and that we have so many rivers to develop and encourage our people. We can even supply Northern Samar, Western Samar, and the rest. Itong hindi maintindihan ng taong bayan natin. Mr. Chairman, the president of Top Hydro uh, is uh, present in Zoom. Can we ask uh, him to say something in, yes. in this meeting? Yes. Uh, may we call on uh, Mr. Benji Picardo of Taft Hydro? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning there, I guess. Um, uh, afternoon, pala, no? Um, yes, I have been, before we, <clears throat> we actually came on stream uh, back in as early as 2018, no? Um, I had been dealing with uh, GM Amancio, no, because quite frankly, this was a requirement of our funding institutions, no, to have a PSA, you know, because the uh, <clears throat> the feed-in tariff at the time was uncertain. Now, <clears throat> we could actually get out of feed-in tariff, no, it's our option, 
if we could have a bilateral with, with any off-taker, uh, we'd be happy to do that. Because one of the reasons why um, I developed uh, these um, renewable energy projects is to help also my, my home province. So I'm from there. Um, now, you have a gap, uh, GM, no, of what, eight megawatts, no, which you are uh, getting from Wesson. We could very easily supply that. We could break our our feed in tariff because a lot of the co-ops now are knocking on our doors for their renewable portfolio um, requirement, no, the RPS. So, I mean, that's a solution I could offer to you guys. and. Uh, and the rest of uh, now uh, another, uh, the Honorable uh, Congressman Libanon <clears throat> pointed out that as early as this September, we will add another um, 14 megawatts of uh, hydro. And early next year, we'll have the 20 megawatt um, solar. No? Now, I looked at your contract with GN and there are provisions, there are escape clauses that you could invoke, no? Like, I don't know, their failure to deliver as promised in 2014 was, was already a violation of your contract. My question is, why did you not break it? So Mr. that's Chairman. what I can say about this. Yes, thank you, Mr. Benji Picardo. Uh, at least narinig po natin yung Taft Hydro na willing naman po sila pumasok sa isang kontrata kasama ang SMLCO. Actually, pag uh, narinig po natin, mukhang uh, nakita na po natin yung first step na kailangan gawin para sa problema ng, uh, ng Eastern Summer. Uh, isang question lang na gusto sana ibato rito, Yusek Sharon, and I'm sure... Honorable Dagook will also have an answer to this. Talaga bang normal na 20 years ang isang kontrata? Umaabot ng 20 years? It, 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 happens, it happens, Mr. Chair. There are those that are shorter, even some are longer. Yeah. Uh, but ang ginagawa kasi, when, when prices started going up, Mr. Chair, ang ginawa ng ERC together with the OE was uh, have a caravan to all the EC, the areas and teach them how to renegotiate their uh, their contracts. Kasi iba uh, nag-over-contracting or too expensive uh, or under-contracting. Some, some regions, uh, that's what happened. So, uh, tinuturuan, I don't know if uh, uh, Isamelco was present or attended that uh, caravan. But they went to region per region or province per province, Mr. Chair. So kung, if they weren't able to attend, we can have some a group again go to the as a, as a, I volunteer <laughs> pointing to minority leader. We can send a group there to to talk to them. Mr. Chair, may yes, I yes, uh, yeah. honorable uh, Jesus. Yeah, thank you. No, with regard to the contract for 2041. Po ako lang with that 3 pesos, kahit na 2050, papayag ako. Because the law on inflation, by that time, ang generation na sa CSB aabot ng mga 8, 9 pesos. With that 3 pesos, mura yan. Ang tanong kasi rito, bakit sila tumaas? Yung tumaas lang sila because of the Ukraine and Russia. And because of the fuel adjustment, yun ang ipinasa eh, yung fuel adjustment. Am I right, GM? So, tanong natin ERC, bakit nila pinayaga ng Genkos na ipas on yun. Dapat uh, sa generation yun. Kaya nag-suffer ang mga MCOs natin. Yun ang mga reason. Kaya kung tatanin mo, kahit na 100 years, kung 3 pesos, low on inflation, by the 2080, super. Pariyan na lang yung 3 pesos. So it's not about the contract. No? Tama yung ginawa nyo kasi 3 pesos. And that time, coal was the cheapest form of energy. At agawan nun, kung ikaw may iwanan ka, Doon ka sa WSM, which is triple the price. So I agree with them, uh, Mr. Ta yung 3 pesos, mura yan. By 2041, yun yung marirealize na napakababa niyan. The problem is yung fuel adjustment. And the question is, ganyan ba tumatas ang, kurye, ang uh, presyo ng diesel o gasolina? Talaga ba dapat pinapasa sa inyo ng Genkos? ERC, Mr. Chair, ang dapat sumukot dyan. Yeah. Isang nakita ko rin, actually, since we're discussing itong contract na to and the uh, 
pinag-uusapan natin na 20 years yung lock-in. That 3 pesos already includes the fuel cost doon eh, no? When you guys entered yung kontrata nyo. Tama. So, so yung pinupunto ko lang, specifically, ano, sa, because halos lahat ng kontrata natin entered into ng mga generation companies, pass on talaga ang fuel. Tama? Tama ba tayo, ERC? Pass on palagi yan, di ba? Nagkaroon lang tayo ng isang kontrata na hindi naging pass on ng fuel. Tama? But all the contracts entered into by the Gencos, panay pass on yung fuel natin. Tama? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor. Okay. So, teka lang, uh, Honorable Dagong. Ito lang nasa isip ko. Ano? So, I think this has to be reviewed by the DOE. Mainly because, bakit kinakailangan natin mag-lock uh, in for so long when during the time na nagbidding tayo, napakababa ng fuel. Tapos, all along, we know naman na pag tumaas yung fuel cost, eh, ipapass on na rin natin. So, dapat there's always a provision to to for the electric co-op co-ops to escape mainly because there's no point to lock it in eh bakit eh kasi pag tumaas naman yung fuel ipapas mo rin so in other words bakit ka kinakailangan mag-lock in di ba bakit ka pa nga rin kailangan may kontrata so so ang sabi ko nga although we also look at yung cost recovery nung Nung planta, tinitinan rin po natin yan. But at the end of the day, pag naglaban-laban na itong mga Gencos na to, pass on lahat. So kunyari, nag-apply nag sila doon, siguro halos lahat, naglaban na niya na 3 peso something. Tapos nakuha na lang yung pinakamababa. But pag tinignan natin ng long run, pag tumaas yung cost ng fuel, ipapass on lang natin. Kaya ngayon, nagiging problema natin sa SML ko, umaabot na ngayon tayo sa 8 pesos. Tama ba? 8 pesos yung generation charge from 3 pesos. But that doesn't apply only to SML ko. That applies to everyone. Lahat po ng cooperatives natin ngayon at lahat po ng mga Gencos natin matataas ngayon ng generation charge mainly because mataas po yung, yung fuel niya, yung coal. Whether it's coal, whether it's diesel, mataas po. Whether it's natural gas, mataas po ngayon lahat yan. Mainly because of outside factors or forces na nagpo-push do sa international market price na tumaas. Kaya yung sa tingin ko, kaya I want to direct the suggestion to you Sec Sharon Garin. I I don't understand why ang mga electric co-op should have like a foolproof contract na you can't really get out of when in fact yung fuel cost natin, yung fuel price eh pina pinapas rin po natin. So Diba? Da dapat bigyan natin ng leeway ang mga electric co-ops to be able to adjust in cases wherein there's a, eto na nga, yung isa naging kontrata, uh, crisis in situations, mga ganyan, kunyari may un uh, unimagined or unforeseen na uh, uh, angat ng uh, presyo ng fuel, dapat may konting leeway or bigyan ng leeway ang mga electric co-ops para mag-ano sila, maka-adjust ba dun sa ano? Yes, Honorable Dago. Uh, ganito kasi Mr. Chair, uh, narinig niyo kanina yung si ano yung president ni ng ano yung Hydro. Uh, oh. Kung narinig niyo yung sinabi niya na uh, nakipag ano siya kay J. Mamancio dahil kailangan yan nila nung ano pa sila because ang ang 20 25 year buti nga pumayag na 20. Normally kasi 25 yan kasi kailangan yan sa financial closing. So hindi pupunduhan ng bangko yung planta na yan kung walang power supply agreement na 25 years because the uh, normal lifespan of a power plant is 25. Doon sa binabayaran natin, Mr. Chair, as a point of information, hindi lang po pure will yung generation component. Dalawa pong component yan. Yung isa is CRF, Capital Recovery Fee. Yung isa po is fuel. Ang lahat ng kontrata ay ganito, lahat, buong Pilipinas. So, ang capital recovery fee, that is a fixed cost for 25 years. Kung halimbawa, 25 million yung cost ng pagtayo ng planta at yung planta mo ay 1 uh, uh, mega, it should be 25 million divided by 1 mega, divided by 25 years. Yan yung capital recovery mo na fixed for the whole duration. 
So ngayon, yung pure will, normal po lahat yan na variable siya. Nagbabari siya, depende sa cost ng pure will at the time. Ngayon kung nagpabid sila, nung year na yon, ito yung presyo ng call, yan yung nagiging presyo. Kaya nanalo yung call. Kaya, because we are required to conduct CSP by DOA. So kung in the conduct of CSP, ang nanalo call dahil mura siya, ay il, uh, palagay ko yung planta na yan ay 5 years na nag-operate kasi pumapayag sila na 20 years lang kasi na, nabawi na nila yung 5 uh, years. So that's the reason why 20 at saka 25. Ngayon, ito yung uh, naririnig mo palagi sa akin, Mr. Chair, na para akong sirang plaka, tuwing may ERC, palagi kong sinasabi, magpalabas na kasi kayo ng template sa power supply contract para mapwersa yung mga gene ko na lagyan, halimbawa, maglagay si ERC ng uh, provision doon na pag nag-increase tayo, 15% na yung increase doon sa 3 pesos pag bid natin, nag-increase na kayo ng 15 or 20, depende sa cap na isit ng ERC, ay dyan lang kayo ang pwede ninyong ipasa. Pag-usapan muna natin. Kasi walang magawa yung mga distribution utility dahil wala namang mag-supply sa kanila. Kung sasabihin ni planta ay, kung gusto mo 5 years lang, ay maghanap ka ng ibang planta. Kasi kami, 20 yung ano namin. Eh, you are post, post to the wall kasi Ah, hindi mo naman mapwersa kung ayaw nilang magbid. Kaya nga may failure of bidding dahil walang magbibid kung tingin nila hindi sila kikita yung doon sa terms of reference mo. So, thank you Mr. Chair. <laughs> so, uh, sorry Honorable Ibanan. So, specifically nga, that's, that's the reason why uh, I think the DOE is already uh, drafting new rules for the CSP and that I guess that's one of the things where we also need to look at in the amendment of the EPIRA law. So, like like what I said kanina, uh, one of the things na napansin ko rin, uh, and I think that the Department of Energy should look into is specifically on CSPs. Ano, i ano ibig ko sabihin? Kasi kung nag-CSP tayo, kahit lumang planta, kahit bagong planta, sabay-sabay naglalabanan. So I think as to the mix, ng, as to the amount of uh, what's being bidded out, Dapat uh, DOE should be able to determine whether itong percentage na to can be supplied by the old plant or this percentage could be supplied by the new plant. Kasi hindi mo pwede paglaban yung new at old in one bidding because halos naka-recover na yung old, yung new naman, o yung CRF nila naka-recover na, yung new naman mag-re-recover pa lang. So I think there's a lot of things na kailangan tingnan talaga and uh, I am very happy to to find that the D Department of Energy is talagang very cooperative at uh, really looking at uh, things to be able to help our consumers. Uh, sorry po, Honorable Libanan, but uh, just like our hearing kanina with the uh, ISEL Coin Electric uh, Cooperative kanina, uh, we've also looked into some of the issues and a lot of issues came up na sa tingin rin namin would be able to help the other electric co-ops and just the same dito po sa hearing po natin honorable libanan uh, some of the issues that are being raised here is hindi lang naman po applicable dito lang po sa SM SML co but also to other electric cooperatives Mr. Chair Yes honorable Gary. Uh Chair uh try na we are we put a moratorium on exemptions uh so that we can revisit the CSP and now ERC is doing the new rules we will uh, inform the committee once there's a public hearing so that uh, we can make sure na mabantayan nyo. Um, and, and, and well noted, Mr. Chair, all the uh, possible uh, flexibility of the generation, uh, of the distribution utilities and the ECs on, kasi medyo natatali nga marami. But uh, yes, and, and well noted also uh, with the suggestions of Congressman Dagoog. In fact, we, I am already have a meeting with uh, Congressman Dagoog so we can pick his brains on how to improve the electric cooperatives. But uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we will uh, no, we will inform the the committee once we have the... It, it drop. Honorable Mr. Chairman. Yes, pa. Uh, going back, kanina po ay nagsalita si Mr. Benji Picardo, ang president ng Taft Hydro, na pwede siyang mag-supply 
ng kailangan natin ng mga uh, 8, uh, 8 megawatts. So, ang request ko sa iyo, uh, uh, Manager uh, Amancio, mag-usap na kayo kaagad. Huwag na natin hintayin pa ito. Nandiyan na yung solusyon. Nakikita na natin yung solusyon. Uh, do, do it. Mag-usap kayo at nandito sa atin ang Department of Energy para maramdaman kaagad ng taong bayan na may ginagawa tayo. At uh, lalo na sa Eastern Summer na ma-avail nila yung low, low cost of electricity. Mr. Chairman, I would like to go to another matter, on, still on, on the prices. Mr. Chair, may I... Since the uh, TAF uh, Hydro wanted to have a direct uh, line with the Isamelco, would we uh, would like to know magkano ang per kilowatt nila? Kasi importante rin to eh. Kung magkano offer nila, can they beat the three pesos right now, or is gonna be higher? Kasi importante rin to. Eh. It's useless of having a bilateral contract with TAF kung uh, matas din ang bibili niyo kuryente. It will be a same banana, Mr. Uh, Chair. Mr. Chair, the the rate being. Uh... Uh, offered by Top Hydro is a uh, fit rate 580 per kilowatt hour, something to that. And you think that's uh, cheap compared, uh, compared to your lock in contract with your yes. yes. Secondly, Mr. Chair, uh, we would like to clarify your our application for the approval of the bilateral contract with uh, GNPD is now pending with the RC. Wala pa pong final decision. Uh, oh. oh. I think uh, so. You can, you can get up entertain up. more uh, other positions, though. Hindi pa po approve provisional approval pala. So hindi pa tayo locked up up to 2041. Kung magkano? Hindi pa approve ng ERC. Uh, so Mr. Uh, let's do something for our people, ha? Oh, let's do something because aabot yun ng 50 megawatts. Mr. Chair, may technical <laughs> question lang ako kasi <laughs> this must be, become a Complaint na naman later on kung nasa hydro na bakit mahal. So, can I ask Mr. Chair yung ano si Mr. Benji? Yes, si sir. Mr. Can I ask uh, tic uh, technical ano lang? Para at least Quintas Claras dito. Kasi lilipat yung isa mail ko. Yes, uh, Mr. Benji Picardo. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, can I ask uh, ano ba yung... Uh, design ngayon ng uh, planta ninyo. Ano yung output voltage niya 69? From planta to 69 siya o lower voltage? We're actually hitting more than 69. No? Um, eh, yung design niya ngayon is 69. Correct, yes. Okay, so if that is 69, uh, Jim, kung this is an embedded, uh, granting na kukontrata kayo, lilipat kayo, So, uh, kailangan niyo mag-put up pa muna ng substitution doon sa area. Dahil 69 to, or i-request niyo na lang si planta to redesign yung output nila, 13.8 na lang para diretso sa distribution niyo. Wala na kayong, magkano yung transmission charge niyo ngayon? Mr. Chair, actually yung top hydro naka-transmission siya, 69 kV. Ayun na nga, magkano yung uh, transmission charge ninyo ngayon? Nasa 1 pesos per kilowatt hour. 1 peso. Oh, yeah. Ang sinasabi ko, kapag ka maguhin nyo yung, ano niya, yung design, instead na 69 yung palabas niya, diretso siya sa, ano, sa, sa distribution, mawawala po yung transmission charge dahil hindi na kayo dadaan sa NGCP. Pangalawa, that Mr. will Chief. address that will address your voltage problem kasi doon na siya sa distribution. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, i-clarify ko. Uh, kung isang plant lang yan, isang generator lang, pwede yung 3 megawatts. Kaso ito'y 16 megawatts. So, kada, tatlong, oh, kalat-kalat. So, hindi mo pwede kunin yung 3 megawatts. Nakakunik siya sa 69. Nearest substation is around 8 kilometers yung mababa pa rin yung mataas pa rin yung low voltage mo kaya ay suggest kung kukuha ka as, as GM also no kung kukuha ka mag put up ka na lang ng sarili mong 69 na malapit sa planta do not connect anymore to NGCP na address mo pa yung voltage mo dahil 
direkta ka na sa planta, nawala yung one peso nila sa'yo. Wala nang babayaran one peso yung galing doon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Yeah, Jesus. thank you. Because as far as yung NGCP po, I think merong uh, batas o uh, may guidelines ang NGCP bylaws nila. Pag less than ba 20 megawatt na embedded na generation, kagaya na ito, sa loob ng franchise area na ano, okay lang ba sa inyo na hindi nadadaan sa 69 KB nyo? Kasi alam ko, below 20 uh, megawatt, eh, okay na di ba? Just sa ano nyo, sa, as far as NGCP is concerned. Kasi kayo lahat, gusto nyo dumadaan sa inyo eh. Uh, Mr. Mr. Sa Chair, totoo lang, uh, uh, sa totoo lang, para may kita kayo. Uh, di ba? Mr. Chair, clarification lang pala. Uh, uh, gusto namin sa transmission kasi pag oh. yung i-embedded oh, mo siya sa oh. top substation, mamamala naman si Burong Gun Substation. There are No, kasi yung tasang yun, nakaka-spice sa transmission, GM, kasi, God, malaking bagay. Jeff, just imagine if you pay a transmission line for more than 1 pesos, bawas na kagad. Right now, is 15 pesos, magiging 14 na. At yung reliability nandun na. Kaya I'm asking tong NGCP, pag below 20 ba, pwede nga allowed na sila na mismo, hindi na dadan sa linya nyo? NGCP? <laughs> Not all. Uh, I'm Mr. Lozano. Uh, I'll just uh, manifest lang po kasi it's not part of my uh, function, but we will uh, check on this with our management. However, I think uh, they can also study it para whether they can whichever is good for the people. But for the moment, I, I cannot comment on that. Mr. Chair, yeah. Masasagot po yan ng ERC kasi that's an old rules. Open access transi- transmission service rules. ERC po po yun, di ba? ERC? <laughs> ano rule dago? Sinabi rin naman ng NGCP, whatever is good for the people eh. Di, uh-huh. di, okay, okay di ba? Mm-hmm. ERC, Attorney Catral? Or uh-huh. anyone from ERC? Yes, Engineer yes, Matubang. Yes, yes Your Honor. In terms of kung ilan ng pwedeng kumunek sa sa grid or sa distribution meaning kung sa grid ko connect hindi naman nililimit kung sino yung ko-connect sa grid based sa Philippine distribution uh, yung direkta direkta uh, direct 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 uh, uh, yeah kung diretsa sa uh, distribution facilities uh, pwede naman as long as kayang po ng distribution utilities to cater sa uh, load Uh, it's at generation facilities. Yun yung ano natin doon. Yun. South Rolls, Mr. Chair, nilawin ko lang. If, South if I may po, if I may. Hello. Uh, kaya direct na sila na hindi nadadaan sa NGCP? Uh, based, ang reference ko po, yung Ariana is based on the Philippine distribution code. Meron po tayong classification lahat ng embedded generator doon. Eh. So yung sinasabi na yung large embedded generator, Uh, 10 megawatts na kumunek sa ano sa distribution pero uh, hindi nagano yung kung gaano kalaki ang ano above 10 megawatts as long as uh, uh, kaya pong i-kunin i-absorb ng isang utilities po may kulang sa sinabi mo as long as NGCP will allow after their grid impact study tama Eh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, nakalagay po din sa Philippine Distribution. Uh, Dapat i-coordinate sa... On this part of distribution, we will conduct distribution impact study. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so, yun. Pwede mag-connect. Dapat may memorize ninyo yung GCP yan. Thank you, Honorable Degok. Yes, Honorable Libanan. Tignan niyo. May I have the floor, please? Uh, I think uh, as a medical board president would want to say a few words. Uh, gusto ko lang ano i-clarify kasi uh, uh, sabi ni Mr. Picardo kaya niya mag-supply sa isang ko ng 8 megawatt. Ngayon, under sa new existing policy, kailangan mag-conduct ng CSP. Ano, e, e, ano natin yung pagkakandak ng CSP? E, direkta na lang kami makikipagkontrata sa Tapaydro. Parang magagano ang mangyayari. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Hingi kayo ng certificate of exemption yeah. sa DOA. Ang problema lang, under their present circular existing, 5 mega 10 mega yung Luzon, 5 mega yung Visayas and Mindanao, which I could not understand. Anong kaibahan ng Visayas and Mindanao? Bakit 5 lang? 
Pero nandiyan naman sila. Rolls na Manila yan. Uh, pwede naman nilang yan. yan. Certificate of exemption. 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 Nandiyan naman yung hihinga nyo ng certificate of exemption. So, madali na lang. Kaya lang, Honorable Libanan, just like uh, what uh, Honorable Sharon Garin mentioned a while ago, the CSP is under review by the DOE. So, ang mga issue once nila ng mga certificate of exemption are put on hold muna, sandali, because they're still trying to finish yung mga rules. But eventually, after the rules, I, I think we can see na... Kung sakasakali, baka pwede na tayo kumuha ng exemption so you guys can go directly with the ano, Mr. Chair, address supplier. Yes, yes, Honorable Jesus. Thank you. Uh, anyway, the, the rule, the circular memo issued by uh, the DOE back then, no? Luzon, Luzon uh, besides sa Mindanao, you are allowed 5 megawatt embedded and the Luzon is 10 megawatt. So it's only circular. Why not 10 na lahat uh, USEC is last kong uh, ano? Ano, pwede ba puro 10 na lang? Bakit? How come there is a kumbaga may discrimination eh? Or a certain percentage of yes, the the actual uh, 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 megawatt uh, it depends on the distribution utilities. Yes, uh, yes Mr. Chair. Um, this has been discussed with, we, I discussed it with the Secretary also and also with Congressman Nagook. Um, we can't find the reasoning why in the past it was limited to 10 Five, five. But one factor is also the capacity of the grid also, uh, Mr. Chair. We have to consult also with the NGCP. But yes, uh, the department is um, uh, is will review no, the, the circular. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusa Green. Yes, uh, Mr. Herna. Siguro, Mr. Chair, habang review yung mga guidelines, kasi yung kontrata namin sa Pip ko, emergency powers, tumip sa magtatapos uh, na ngayong July. Ngayong ngayong taon, eh, yung ibinigay sa amin ni ADC, yung geothermal, manunoli, yung tungunan, we asking na i-retain yung 2 megawatts, pero binigyan lang kami ng 2 megawatts. Siguro kung uh, matutulungan kami ng committee na ito, na at least naman yung mawawala kay Pip ko, na absorbunas ni ADC kasi si ADC ay ito kung di ako nagkakamali is producing more than 500 megawatts nasa nasa region it yan hindi mo lang kami binibigyan ng... siguro with the help of this committee I think uh, siguro madagdagan si 2 from 2 to 7 kasi mawawala na sa keep ko eh this coming July Sir Chairman can I, can I answer <clears throat> Uh, precisely, that's why we are having this meeting, so that we can help Isamilco. You just write to us. The Undersecretary of Energy is here. The Chairman is here. So, kung paano kami makakatulong sa inyo, gagawin po namin. Uh, kung kailangan nyo ng uh, supply galing sa geothermal, sa tungunan, then uh, we will make representations. Ako mismo, dahil sa... Ito yung nare-represent ko, yung mga mas nakakahirap na sektor ng ating uh, lipunan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may ask the Honorable Undersecretary, kailan lalabas yung bagong guidelines ninyo? So July, uh, middle of the year, lalabas yung kanilang guidelines para kayo makakuha ng certificate of exemption. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, may nakikita na tayong green light na at least bababa tayo. Oh. Second, Mr. Chairman, if I may proceed with another topic. Nakikita ko po dito sa bill natin na napakaraming taxes ang uh, na nakasulat dito. Actually, pinoint out na ito ni, ni Congressman Dago na ipinapasa sa consumers. Nandito yung local taxes, generation, 0.9263. Transmission, 0 0.1042. Systems loss, 0.1739. Distribution, 0 0.1200. Ang daming taxes na nandito. Pero ang nagbabayad ng tax, hindi yung national grid, hindi yung, dis yung uh, transmission, hindi yung distribution. Pero... Pati systems loss, tinatax pa. Yung nawawala, tinatax pa. 
Ang ibang bansa, sinusubsidize ang kuryente. Tayo, ang buwis, ipinapa sa lahat sa consumers. Doon pa sa mga nabibiktima tayo. Sino bang pwedeng sumagot dito? Bakit nangyari ito? Can, can uh, the Department of Energy answer this? You say, Karin? Yes, sir. Uh, we, we have uh, actually discussed this during the... Uh, the briefing of the committee for on the IPIRA amendments. And it was suggested by Congressman Dagook actually to, to hard code that na dapat wala tong taxes, these items in the uh, yung sa bill ng, ng uh, consumer. But this has been a subject of different interpretations, uh, Mr. Chair. So I think that is the best solution should uh, the I leave it to the wisdom of the of uh, a Congress. No, um, this is also a mix of interpretations among the different agencies, BIR, ERC, and including DOE also. But uh, should uh, should that is the direction of the uh, of Congress, then uh, uh, um, then we can uh, we can uh, include that in the IPIRA uh, amendments, Mr. Chair. Well, with, with that answer and the assurance of the chairman that we will be discussing it when we amend the IPRA law. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, finally we are revisiting the IPRA law because I think it's high time that we are revisit this piece of legislation. Mr. Chairman, I think we have uh, discussed thoroughly yung tungkol sa high prices at uh, uh, kung anong may tutulong ng mga offices namin, ng uh, chairman, ako as minority leader, at saka ang Department of Energy, you write to us because we are very interested to help you uh, para mapababa natin at maramdaman ng taong bayan natin ang ginagawa natin na sa ating mga respective offices. Pangalawa, yung second problem is on low voltage. Ito yung pinoint out kanina ni Mayor Annalisa gonzalez Kwan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can we ask uh, Isamel ko bakit nagkakaroon ng low voltage po ito? Yes, Attorney Edwin Amancio. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, actually our substations and our delivery voltage to our consumers uh, all are coming from the transmission line by NGCP. So there are times and most of the time nag low voltage sila. If the delivery voltage should be 69, let's say in Borongan, they only deliver around 66, 65. So, pagdating sa kay consumer, mas mababa pa yan. No? So, meron po kaming record. Meron kami mga letter complaint kay NGCP, but ganito yung voltahe. Kasi yun nga, nakaka sa consumers. Mr. Chairman, can NGCP please answer that? Yeah, NGCP. Mr. Lozano? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there are some instances where in the delivery voltage, uh, nagkakaroon po tayo ng uh, pagbaba, especially during that time where in our source of power is being transferred to our, to our Parana substation. However, the main objective of that uh, transferring that to Parana substation is to lessen the impact to the consumer because if ever during the time of our maintenance in other substation which is in Santa Rita. Now, uh, but it is not that uh, frequent uh, for that uh, incident to happen because yung ating po kasing before, ang ating setup is nasa Paranas lang ang ating main source. Then we put at another substation which is Santa Rita substation para mahati na natin. And also, the main intention is flexibility na in the event na meron tayong maintenance sa isang part, then we can source out from another part. Of course, uh, kapag ganun pong ginawa natin, meron pong konting sacrificio doon sa quality because medyo malayo na. But still, within the parameters pa naman, uh, kaya lang talagang sa part ni consumer, medyo uh, maapektuhan na sila because it will... Uh, pass on pa dun sa kanilang pababa sa kanilang. But the delivery on our side is still within uh, the limit pa rin. Pero uh, we agree. We are also uh, 
the main objective of that situation is to lessen the impact of the interruption to the general so so ang ang nakikita ko si dito is parang we're here to accept na lang na ganun na lang ang mangyayari parang ang gusto siguro marinig especially ng mga taga Eastern Summer ano pwedeng gawin para hindi tayo masyado nagkakaroon ng low voltage i'm sure hindi lang sa Eastern Summer yan kahit sa anyan kahit sa amin sa probinsya namin naglo low voltage rin kami but what can we do i mean there are i'm sure there are machines or gadgets or equipments to be able to address low voltage not only on the part of uh, the transmission but also on the part of the distribution so ano bang mga paraan diyan and bakit hindi tinitingnan ng ating transmission yun para naman hindi tayo nagkaka low voltage chair. yes you said green uh The transmission actually has transmission development plan in which the, the schedules of the projects are there. Minsan lang ah, hindi nagtutugma yung generation with the, with the transmission. So minsan nauna yung generation or minsan nahuhuli din yung generation. Um, there's one project of NGCP which is scheduled in 2030 and that should help in stabilizing na? the 69 kilovolts. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. So one, um, that's too far away, I think, for my minority leader. Um, one, one proposal that we can make, but this is long term uh, on the EPIRA, is that, uh, that another entity can build it in behalf of NGCP. Now, if we do it today, I think that is still possible, sir, no, uh, attorney, that you can build the transmission line. Uh, but you have to get the permit of NGCP so that they can make sure that it's stable enough. Pwede naman, kaya lang uh, there's a, uh, uh, depending on the assessment of NGCP. Yeah, uh, I think we we were able to discuss this nga, specifically yung mga, because napakadami na nagre-reklamo regarding sa mga projects ng NGCP. And one of the solutions nga that are being seen is that is being seen is yung pabayaan nga natin ng isang private entity to come in instead of NGCP. So, I think uh, upon the review of the EPIRA, siguro we can look into that. But I believe, kunyari, let's say there's a certain project uh, regarding transmission that's really needed by a certain uh, distribution utility. I, I don't think we need the, the approval of NGCP for that. Otherwise, kasi baka arangan or something, I don't know, hindi ko naman sinasabi arangan. But, uh, for example, kagaya nung sa Mindoro, Mindoro needs a submarine cable. ba? Diba? It needs a submarine cable yesterday. Yeah. But ngayon, hanggang ngayon, wala pa. I think, uh, uh, NGCP is in the process of uh, building a submarine cable. Kaya lang magiging online pa. Kaya lang to, use a Sharon? This this was originally scheduled in March 2021, but the updated estimated uh, completion is September 2027. It so, has been moved three times already. See? So, yung mga instances na gano'n, no, parang supposedly naka-online na yung project tapos hindi natatapos, medyo, medyo nakaka-ano talaga yan. Nakaka-abala. Lalo na, especially now sa Mindoro, when we talk about Oriental and Occidental Mindoro, uh, Eastern, Eastern Summer has its problems, but the Oriental and Occidental Mindoro has really, really, really has a very, very big problem. Wala na talagang dumadaloy na electricity. But Honorable, Honorable Libanan, all I'm saying is, these are certain things na natutuwa kami na we see all the time. Because every time we conduct hearings, because we already see the problems and uh, we have, uh, there's an avenue for us to be able to create the solution to that problem. Kaya actually, very excited for the amendment of the EPIRA. So, yun nga, parang uh, napansin ko rin, kagay ng uh, magiging problema ng sa Giwan, Eastern Summer, regarding the 69 KV. So, although NGCP has the Uh, franchise for transmission when inept ang uh, NGCP cannot deliver I think that's the time we're in uh, 
a private entity should be allowed to enter to be able to uh, fix the or provide that needed service. Yes, Honorable Libana. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chen. Yung isa pang uh, problema dito, kaya hindi namin matanggap ito na low voltage. Dahil ang remedyo ng households ay bumili ng transformer. Pag bumibili naman ng mga trans yung mga commercial uh, sorry, commercial establishments, bumibili ng transformer, sariling transformer. At pag bumibili na ng transformer, times 300% na minsan ang binabayaran. Tama po ba? Uh, uh, Mr. President ng Isamelco. Magkano ba? Magkano bang multiplication yan pag may sarili ka ng transformer? May kasama niya, Mr. Chair, may kasama niya na core losses. Yun ang Magkano ang, ang computation niyo sa transformer na binibili ng mga uh, kahit yung malaking residential, mga mga commercial establishments, may mga sariling transformers yan, di ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Para para tumama yung bultahin nila. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, yung pagbili ng transformer, sumusunod kami sa NIA Price Index. Actually, naggawa na kami ng policy kung anong mga idinadagdag na bayarin ni Sol Yoser, ibinawas na namin yun. Wala na talagang as in, walang pumapasok kay Isamil ko. Kung ano ang pagkabili ng uh, transformer sa labas na within the index price of NIA, yun lang dapat ang bayaran ni Sol Yoser. Ibig sabihin, uh, wala, walang ipinapatong kundi yung consumption lang. Wala yung sinasabi mong uh, uh, core, core loss. Yung sinasabi, Mr. Chair, na core loss, uh, umaano yun sa system loss na bali na kukumpute yun. Yung nga wawalang kuryente na isasama yun sa system loss, yung, yung sinatawag na core loss. Kasi yung transformer, pagkalam ko, pag ginamit yan, kumukonsumo yan ng kuryente. Ma-power transformer man yun o ma-distribution transformer yun. Pero kung malakas ang bultahe mo, hindi mo kailangan ng mga transformers. Tama po ba? Kasi dapat ang transformer, pinoprovide yan ng distributor. Tama po ba? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. No? I think we have a technical person. Medyo silang pa-explain natin. Uh, one more, Mr. Chair. Actually, talaga, tinignan namin sa Purongan substation lang. Ang incoming voltage from NGCP noong May 18, meron tayo 9AM 54KB lang. Yung, yung line 2 is 62KB, line 3 is 64. Yung pinapropose ni NGCP maglalagay ng capacitor. Actually, sa aming technical personnel, sa aming maglagay kayo ng generator dyan kasi nagbabay kami ng ancillary charges. Yun talaga ang magsusolve kasi load end tayo. Kung may mga generator dyan na even standby, to correct the voltage, I think malaki yung impact nun. Eh, kahit mag-extend tayo, Mr. Chair, ng 69 KB, pag low voltage, in-extend na yung dating low voltage sa malayo pa rin. Mr. Chair? Yes, Honorable Desus. Thank you. Anyway, uh, the good GM, no? Amang siya mention yung ancillary. I think sa high time din po sa EPIRA. Anyway, tomorrow sa EPIRA uh, first discussion. Totoo bang may ancillary available? Kasi ang purpose ng ancillary, in service na yan. Papalo yan kapag nag, uh, ma, kulang ang takbo ng kuryente ng mga Genkos. Kaya automatic papalo na yan para maano yung low voltage at saka yung, yung interruption. Kaya ang tanong ko sa NGCP, do they have available ancillary service in Eastern Sama? NGCP? Kasi Mr. Chair, binabayaran natin yan sa power bills natin, yung ancillary service na yan na hindi natin nakikita, multo siya, pero hindi natin nakikita, nagbabayad tayo. Yung ancillary service ba, Honorable Presley, when you say nagbabayad tayo, that's like a all-in price sa, yan for, yeah. for the Kasama whole ancillary. Kasama sa transmission yan, no? sinisigil ng NGCP. Na, ewan ko kung, see, do you give a breakdown? Iwalay yung transmission line na rental at saka yung ancillary. Nakaiwalay ba sa power bills yan na uh, GM? Nakaiwalay? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, well, so how much yung, it's millions uh, monthly charge ng GCP. Mas kung binabayad mo sa ancillary service na hindi nyo ginagamit yung kuryente nyo, magkano? Uh, kung minsan na abot yan ng almost 2 million per month. 2 million uh, na hindi nila nakikita. Walang voltage na improvement. 
plus uh, 12% bat. So, when the ancillary service was to answer for the low voltage, you know? Yes, uh, available yan. Eh. Pati yung pagmamanipis ng kuryente, yan ang solusyon. Ang problema, nagbabayad tayo ng multo. Hindi ko, hindi ko nga nakikita ever since kung sino, sino kung saan kumukuha ang ancillary. It's high time to revisit yung kontrata ng ancillary service. Uh, Mr. Chair, ang laki ng binabayaran. So, tumil, so nakahiwalay pala yun. Transmission charges plus ancillary. Am I right, uh, GM? So, y- dapat yun ay question nyo. Saan sa inyo ancillary? No, wala po. Nakawawa naman yung mga pagsisilbihan nyo. So, ang laking pera nawawala. So, 2 million 15 megawatt. Imagine, GM, uh, kami, Selco is 95. We're paying almost 17 million every month. Ancillary service that we never seen. Hindi namin nakita yan. Sana nung pagtaas ng kuryente, yan ang papasok sana para ma-stabilize yung presyo ng kuryente. Pero hindi nakatulong sta- yung ano. Kaya ghost ang tawag ko dyan, GM. Uh, Chairman. Thank you, Honorable uh, Jesus. Yes, uh, Attorney Amancio. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I recall, I think DOE has proposed an ancillary plant in Summer Island. So, I don't know what happened. I think in Calbayog, there is one, 15 megawatts, pero hindi pa nag na diesel. Yung, yun ang ancillary talaga na planta. Okay. Thank you, Attorney Amancio. Mr. Chair, uh, uh, wait, uh, Honorable Libana, I think NGCP would want to say something. Uh, good afternoon once again to the body. Siguro what we can you know, is uh, what we can offer for me for the moment is uh, we will study it well. Uh, we will provide siguro uh, lagyan namin ng power quality meters to the nodal na dapat nating lagyan and observe for a period of time yung power quality na nadideliver namin and so that uh, kasi ang based on our uh, mga monitoring may mga nangyayari siguro but it is not that frequent and it is not that long in duration so it's normal naman na may fluctuation ang tanong na lang is uh, when where and uh, how long yun lang po siguro but uh, for the moment sir we will not uh, stop on that but uh, we will also further study and ano by the way uh, meron naman po kami mga nakas naka uh, latag ng mga programa sa amin to improve the voltage quality in that area uh, we have uh, uh, installation of 5m bar shunt reactor doon sa Borongan Uh, capacitor, 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 sorry. The other one, sorry. Uh, beg to correction, correction. Uh, mag-ingat ka, nandito si Kong Dagi. Uh, kaya, kaya kabisado niya. Yes, okay, yes, kasi yung, 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 yung technical line. Kaya huwag ka magiging technical, capacitor kabisado bank. namin yan. So, negative M bar. Yeah. So, positive M bar kasi yung shunt reactor. Eh. Negative M bar to improve the, the uh, voltage. Positive. Oh, positive. Uh, for the moment, sir, because uh, <laughs> but the point is, uh, sir, sa atin, sir, is yung amin naman, sir, kasi uh, we are monitoring only up to the delivery point of voltage. Then, uh, yung kaninang example, which is nasa, uh, sa, ano, like, we also want to in Sagiwan, na, tinignan ko sa mapa, nasa dulo siya, which is the franchise area na ni Isa Melco. Then, Siguro yun yung pag-usapan later on with the uh, upuan kung paano iaayos. But for the moment, uh, ang what we can offer is syempre yung maintenance ng line, replacement ng mga wood pole namin, and also uh, yung installation ng uh, voltage improvement natin which yung capacitor bank. For the, yun po yung aming nakaplano. And also yung sinabi po ni Yusek, uh, meron din pong plano na yung long-term namin plan is to connect doon sa ilulup siya sa isang part ng aming system. Okay. Okay, sa northern part na po. Tough hmm. borongan. <clears throat> Sir, magkakaroon ba ng loping? Ang, ano mo? Interloping? 69. Yan nga. Uh, May interlope yung 69? Okay, nagsasayang tayo na <laughs> mabayaran naman na Tao yan. Pass on yan. Pass on. Ano yan? Interloping? Uh, good, up- good afternoon. 
So, yung project po na dinidiscuss na ni uh, Sir Ricky is about the looping of the 69 KB of the uh, summer uh, up to the northern summer. But this will be uh, designed at uh, 138 KB in preparation to the future 138 KB looping of the transmission lines uh, serving the whole summer. Uh, prop, uh, Pero 138, not 69. Yes, designed Because at 169, that will not address the low voltage. Lalo pababa kasi nilulup mo na hati na naman yung ano it should be one thread it should be one thread si chair ba't kailangan nila magtipid na 69 138 dapat nga 230 yan eh lahat yung pass on naman yung Mr. Chair eh. so when you look uh, when you study you no know, you should look at uh, yung long term hindi yung 5 years lang kasi lahat tayo dumadami ang uh, ating uh, Uh, pagtaas ng ano ng uh, demand ng isang uh, electric cooperative no kawawa naman na uh, si Mayor Giwan na pag-iwanan na kung nabubuhay si Magellan malamang kayo pinagalitan din yan totoo yun eh pero mo tumpala o man yun so study is not enough no kailangan natin na magano kasi remember we will revisit it here at the same time NGCP is in a hot seat ngayon kailangan magpakita ng gilas kayo ha, hindi lang puro study mag-uusap kayo isa giwan mayor iiwanan niyo rin siya ng dalang dalang akala niyo tapos to tututukan namin to para dito tatlong mayor nito especially coastal area nito ay magkailaw because under PD269 kailangan lahat ng uh, consumers mapailawan eto hindi ko sure bayan mismo ang hindi nakakatikim ng ilaw and then sisihin ang electric cooperative sila daw ang hindi nagpapailaw kayo maglagay ng transmission line thank you mr chair Salamat, uh, Honorable Desus. Yes, Mr. Honorable Dago. This is a very important piece of information. This is a point of information para lang maintindihan natin. Uh, under the existing rules of ERC, doon sa transmission charge, yung samar nila, NGCP is being uh, awarded no? Kung may inefficiency, low voltage, interruptions, tataas po yung binabayaran natin na transmission charge. Uh, ERC, can you confirm this? Uh, under our OTS rules, ang billing nila, peak demand. Engineer Rane, peak demand, di ba? Ay, yes, your order. But uh, dun sa ating latest edition ng 2020, 22 OTS rule. Nag-ship uh, nag na tayo doon sa shared peak demand para at least yung customer makapag... Ayan. Do you think, uh, Mr. Chair, ERC, na-address na lahat ang problema na yan, natataas? Baka mayroon pa. Kasi ang ang kinocompute lang ninyo ngayon, nung <laughs> nagpalagi akong nagre-reklamo, <laughs> ang, ang problema kasi, during the public consultation ng OTS rules, parang with all due respect, So, sa IRC, parang lahat ng sasabihin ng NGCP, nilalagay nyo sa rules, which is, in most cases, favorable sa kanila. I will give example. Dito sa, halimbawa, in the case of Isamilco, no? itong subject ng, ano, ng hearing ngayon, may area doon na ayaw nyo pakialaman yung 69 NGCP dahil sinasabi nyo, eh, wala naman kaming load dyan na, ano, uh, sa co-op naman yan. Pero kung yung linya na yan ay makikita niyo na mayroong malalaking load na mag-connect kahit under Epira dinadaypist na yung mga mga existing 69 pinapabinta na yan sa co-op pupunta kayo sa IRC because inamid na yung rules na kapag ka may nag-connect yan doon kasi wala yan eh ibinta dapat sa co-op yan magmamayari ng co-op para ma-approve na ma ma, ma magiging basis na ni RC to approve under their PDP. Pero ngayon hindi dahil inamend yung yung rules din kayo yung na, na, kayo yung nagpropose sa IRC na kapag pag may nag-connect diyan hindi po pwedeng ibinta sa co-op yan. Kailangan uh, that will be considered transmission. When in fact kasi sa bultahi po yung original na IRR natin. 69 and below, subtrans na supposed to be yan. Pero na-report na naman yung rules ngayon na kahit 69, pag may nag-connect, ngayon hindi nyo pakialaman dyan dahil walang nag-connect. Pag ginawa na isang milko yan, later on may nag-connect na planta dyan, pupunta na naman kayo sa ERC. A-applyan ninyo. Hindi, transmission yan para dadaan sa inyo. Those are rules na gawa-gawa ng mga government agency which 
which does not need legislation na nagpahirap sa atin. Ngayon, sasabihin ko yung hindi na-address doon sa latest ngayon. Dahil reported siya, oh, yung serial ko ay keep on monitoring. 50, uh, ang, ang voltahe ngayon ng Siargao, 62 yung PIS A, 65 yung PIS B, 60, 67 yung PIS C. In GCP, bakit hindi nyo nabalansi yung ano? Tapos nagre-reklamo yung taga-surfing area doon na uh, uh, pag ganon-ganon yung fluctuation. Where is the regulating reserve? Nagbabayad kami ng unserial eh, regulating reserve. Alam ninyo yan, plus 5, minus 5 lang naman yan. Taas pa baba. Sinasabi nyo kanina, within pa naman kami sa, ano, later on, it, uh, itanong ko sa iyo kung within, to be confirmed by RC. Hindi nyo kasi na-address pa yung low voltage, tataas yung losses namin. Kasi un under the existing rules, kinakarga ninyo sa distribution loss yung transmission loss. Kaya yung losses ng distribution nga yun, hindi talaga totoong losses ng distribution yan kasi plant gate yung kontrata, minimetrohan sa planta. Wala na yung dating NPC pa na may 2% na transmission loss. So, ngayon pagka mababa yung ano, tataas yung systems loss. Pag tataas yung systems loss, mababa yung sales ko. Eh nga, dahil tiktiman yung busy sa billing ninyo, Kahit mababa yung sales ko, ang revenue pa rin ninyo dahil nakapako yan sa mar ninyo, maximum allowable revenue, 50 billion. O yung latest ni Enaprove ngayon, 50 billion. Kailangan makuha niyo yung 50 billion. Ay ang divisor nun, yung, yung sales ko. Pag bumaba, koy, pag bumaba yung sales ko, 50 billion for example, divided by yung sales ko dati, kung okay yung bultahin ninyo, Makabinta ako ng 50 billion kilowatt hour. That's one piece only per kilowatt hour na transmission charge. Ngayon dahil mababa yung voltahe ninyo, tumaas yung systems loss ko, ang naibinta ko na lang, 45 billion kilowatt hour. That's 50 billion pa rin, divided by 45 billion. Ngayon, ARC, na-address nyo ba? Mayroon pang hindi na-address. Ang na-address lang ninyo noon, yung interruption. Dahil nagdireklamo ako, 50 billion. Ngayon nag-interrupt kayo, whether scheduled or force outages, every hour na nag-interrupt ako, nawawalan ako ng sales. Bumaba ang sales ko, the same amount na binabayaran ko, tapos yung transmission charge. Yan yung ibig kong sabihin na we are awarding inefficiency. Inefficient ka na nga, tumaas pa yung babayaran mo, naghirap ka na nga ng low voltage, tumaas pa yung transmission charge mo. So this, this is one thing that IPRA can address, embedded para hindi nadadaan sa inyo. Lahat na lang kasi pag nakita ninyo na may future load tong linya na to, pinakialaman nyo. Pag nakita nyo na walang future load, ay hindi nyo sinasama sa TDP. Hindi nyo sinasama sa TDP dahil ang sabi nyo, sa forecast naman kasi yan. Kung mababa yung forecast, hindi namin ni ano, this is an issue of chicken and egg. Mauna ninyo i-correct yung voltahe para may mag doon sa summer Tama ng pistor. Si kung ganun, 160. Ano ko patakbuhin yung hotel ko doon? Sira lahat yung mga air conditioning units ko. So alin ang mauna? Yung voltahe ninyo i-correct? O yung, yung load? Susunod yung load pagka maganda na yung voltahe natin. Kaya hindi yun sa load forecast ang i-consider. Hindi. Yung distance ng ano, pag tingin ninyo mababa, plus you are required by uh, is it true na in GCP you are required under uh, under our existing rules you are required in minus one? Oh, nagawa niyo ba sa Eastern Summer yung in minus one? Hindi. Hindi niyo pa na correct yung voltahe ngayon. In minus one, Mr. Chair, ibig sabihin, may reserva ka na linya. Existing line to, gagawa ka ng isa. Para may, may trouble to, ilipat mo lang para walang interruption. That is a requirement of the of the of the rules. Okay, I think uh, that is already a long lecture from uh, Professor Dagoak. I think we learned a lot. Uh, <laughs> Honorable Libanon, yes. Y yun po ang malas ninyo, may uh, may Congressman Sergio Dagoak sa minority. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, sa, isang isang power block malamian, ha? Sa ating hearing, Mr. Chairman. Mukhang nagliliwanag na ang low voltage 
ay ang problema galing sa NGCP. Uh, kaya tama yung isa ko na sinasabi nila na ang NGCP ngayon ang may dapat gawin na solusyon dito. Kaya kung maaari po, nagre-request po kami sa NGCP. Kung pwede, magbigay kayo ng sulat sa amin. Kung ano yung klinano nyo, eh, sulatan nyo ang chairman, pati ako, para matutukan namin kung ano talaga ang ginagawa nyo at saka yung accomplishment report ninyo. Uh, pwede po bang gawin nyo yun? I'm sure there's already a plan submitted the uh, Honorable Libanan. Specifically, sa DOE, I think uh, you guys submit your uh, transmission plan, no? Yusek Sharon? They, they have, no? Uh, Kaka-approve lang pala. Pwede bang bigyan niyo ako ng kopya para tutukan ko po, baka humingi na naman kayo ng extension. Kaya uh, yeah. wala na akong ibang gagawin kundi ipatawag na nang ipatawag tayo sa kongreso dito. Uh, eh. Specific lang sa ano, serious, Eastern Summer. Sa... But Wala there... na tayo gagawin dito pag, pag, but... pag biniro, biro nyo ito. Lama. And as to the whole transmission plan nyo, pasubmit rin dito sa committee. For Eastern sa... Summer, tapos yung for the whole country sa akin. Thank you. Yes. Pero, no, Chair... Kailan nyo pwedeng isubmit yan sa akin? Next week, pwede na yan. Yeah. Yes. At yes. Yes. Chairman, may tanong lang yes, si Congress di kanina yeah. about the auxiliary partition summer. Wala pang tanong, ah, wala pang sagot ang NGCP kung meron o wala. Yeah, NGCP regarding ancillary services in Eastern Summer. Kasi they uh, paying like 2 million a month. I'm, I'm sure it's not only Eastern Summer. Yes, yeah. pero with this case, Eastern Summer muna. So, Pati Northern Summer yun yata. Eh. Pero ba kayo wala? Kasi nagbabayad kami sa wala. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, this is, sorry, sorry, I'm participating online. Um, the uh, team that are, uh, press, that are currently uh, present uh, right NGCP. now. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, Mr. Chair, the team that are present right now um, uh, are not cognizant uh, of the question that has just been posed. Can we, um, can we be allowed to, to submit um uh, written report on this mr chair uh yes please submit uh, to the yes uh we will coordinate mr chair with the secretariat in so far as what are the details that they want us to um uh to enumerate list or address specifically the ancillary services yes. uh -huh. mr chair particularly very, mr very, chair very regulating reserve naman. regulating reserve regulating reserve in eastern summer Yes, uh, regulating Do you have any knowledge, Do you have any knowledge regarding this matter? And um, also, also the the team that are with me right now. Wala po kaming numero, wala po kaming datos. Nahawak ngayon. Yeah, but eventually, uh, once the uh, Joint Commission, the JCEC, uh, meets, I think one of the issues that will be uh, tackled is NGCP's performance. So I hope uh, NGCP is ready once uh, we meet in the JCEs. Thank you, Attorney. Mr. Chair, may I make yes, a question? No? Uh, you mentioned JCEC, no? So sayang naman kung si Congressman Dagok na Bible na Epira Loto hindi kasama sa JCEC. So mawawalan tayo. Remember, we will overhaul the Epira. Nakasalalay dito ang mga consumers na mga uh, ng kuryente. So, I suggest, Mr. Chair, no, na isama natin si Kong Dagook sa JCEC na, na that will protect the integrity at the same time itong uh, ating kongreso na may tikapagtanggol sa Congress. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, we'll invite uh, Honorable Dagook as a member of Congress and as a professor of uh, electric co-ops. Yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, yung pangatlong issue Uh, magpunta na tayo kasi marami pang gagawin ng chairman mamaya sa may session pa kami. Ang pangatlong issue ay yung frequent brownouts. Palaging nagbabrownout. Last uh, Thursday, nandun po kami sa isang uh, misa sa Salcedo. Mga 50 pare ang nandun. Uh, 50 years uh, uh, na pagkapari ni Monsignor uh, Amistoso kami ni Mayor Gina T. nandun at puno yung simbahan ng mga uh, 
ng mga sumisimba, punong-puno, from all over Eastern Samar, biglang nag-brown out po ang init-init doon. At uh, naalala ko, mag magkakaroon pala tayo ng inquiry dito sa, sa Isamil ko. Bakit ba palaging nag-brown out ang Isamil ko o kung hindi man, uh, madalas mag-brown out? Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair, ang makakasagot niyan ay aking katabi, NGCP pa rin. Oh, nung araw na yun, na Thursday, uh, nag-trip no, yung Santa Rita. Tapos pinapundan, then nilipat nyo sa kabila na pinakamalayo from Paranas. Low voltage talaga yun. 180 kilometers from wow. Paranas to... Yes, uh, NGCP, Mr. Lozano. Uh, okay, once more sir. Uh, good afternoon to the body. Uh, last Thursday po sir, nagkaroon po tayo ng uh, system interruption due to uh, meron pong ahas. <laughs> doon sa along the transmission line and what we did para hindi tumaas tumagal ang interruption sa sir franchise area ng Isamelco is just like I told you there are two sources of power one is from Paranas and the other one is in Santa Rita so nagkaroon po ng problema sa Santa Rita kaya napundan so we shifted our power from one point to another point just last just my statement before Meron lang uh, sak sakripisyo ng kaunti sa quality, which is uh, that time. But uh, that instant kasi, hindi naman po siya peak season, peak load. So it's still uh, within our uh, PGC, Philippine Grid Code Rate, na compliance and voltage quality. However, it's not an excuse, but still uh, we're working on it. Kaya nga po, meron kaming later on uh, project dyan sa Kinapundan that we will put up a... Uh, a pasture bank in whenever na mag-shift kami ng power from one station to another station hindi na sa sacrifice ang voltage so that's happened po during that time po ng insidente po nung binabanggit po nyo but so, uh, we were able to return it uh, hindi naman siya masyado matagal and also boom nag uh, nung nag-normalize lang kami we need to shut down again to complete the system again yeah mr lugano question lang so sinabi niyo po na may ahas na kumabit sa transmission line. Totoo ba yan? Hindi po kumabit, but uh, nakuryente. Nakuryente? Yes. Uh, sa taas ng tower? Yeah. Wow. Hindi po tower, post no, 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 Gusto ko lang ma-clear nila na ng anak ni Zuma na andon. So, so my, my question is, so sabihin natin umakit yung ahas or kung any other factor kung bakit nag-trip yung line mo. How long? Para at least... Uh, yung mga kababayan natin, especially sa Eastern Summer, nalalaman nila, how long ba talaga is given to NGCP to go back online? So, nung, nung time na yon, gano'ng katagal bago nyo na-restore yung tamang power? Baka SML ko, alam nyo rin. Two hours? Three hours? It takes how long ba for, for a trip? For it to go back online? Actually, Mr. Chair, the following day. Huh? Yung, the next uh, day pa? Yes, na eh, balik. But, but in the meantime, yung may low voltage na pumasok. Yes, Tama low ba? voltage yung galing sa kabilang line, para right. Paranas, Taf, Buronggan, Kinapundan. Uh -oh. Pero yun ang tanong ko lang sa NGCP natin is, kunyari yung ganun, uh, inakit ng ahas yung transmission line mo, nag-trip yung line. How long before usually, how long are you guys given to be able to go back online? Yung sa ganong instance. For sure. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, first we need to, although sir, ano, ang karaniwan naman sir na mga transmission line and lines natin are located doon sa mga far flung areas. And it so happened that, uh, syempre we need to first to assess what happened. Then uh, we, have, we will dispatch our personnel to the area. Initingnan ko lang po kasi in details of the outage that time. Medyo gabi na po ito eh. So what we did is nag-try kami. Then uh, pumasok. Then then after a few, ano, nag-triplet. Then uh, so our team uh, are uh, patrolling the line uh, kahit gabi. Pinapatrol namin. Kaya lang there, there comes to a point wherein Uh, doon sa aming flag na nakita namin doon sa distance location is 
located inside the mountain mountainous area which is safety ng personnel medyo ano na so we decided na to isolate muna yung portion na yun and transfer our power to other source of power which is Parana substation so that's why the next day nyo pa naayos yung but uh, they have the power sorry so mm -hmm. kailan pumunta yung linemen nyo doon umaga na uh Mga 5 o'clock, uh, they have they started na yung, uh, yung patrol namin. Even, hindi ko lang po na-monitor during that time because, uh, uh, pero ang instruction is, uh, as long as pagka pwede na sila, they, this, they were immediately dispatched in the area para ipatrol na po. So, dalawang team na yung pinapunta namin doon para mapabilis. So, as much as possible, we are doing it para bumilis po. But, Ang initial na kailangan po namin i-establish is may restore muna yung power uh, doon sa area. Then we, uh, we, we thoroughly uh, patrol the line and considering po kasi na mababa pa yung load, kaya we are checking yung power quality. Then later on, nung nakita na namin, then na ibalik na namin. Actually, even well, di pa namin nakikita yung, ano, yung fault. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we tested the system and it is uh, passed na. We return it to the normal condition. Then we continue to patrol to determine kung ano naging root cause. And we have found out na meron po talagang yun. Okay. It's, it's a reminder lang siguro, Honorable Libanan, sa ating uh, uh, transmission na, of course, we understand yung safety. But dapat may, meron talaga tayong... Standard operating procedure as to how long, kunyari may trip na ganito, you have to bring back the the electricity ng ganito katagal lang. Mainly because you guys are involved in service. Ang kailangan natin, good quality service. Tapos nag-iisa kayong transmission provider. So lahat kami nakasalalay sa inyo. So I think that's one of the things na should be looked into by NGCP na... Not because you guys have a franchise, you just take it for granted. No? Buong, buong Pilipinas nakasalalay sa inyo regarding sa good reliable service. So, I think that's one of the things na kailangan tingnan natin yung, yung service kung gaano kabilis natin na yan sa mga tao. Yes, ano ba the goal? Gaano ba kalayo, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Richard, uh, gaano kalayo yung... <laughs> saan ba, saan ba nakaestation yung mga... line personnel ng NGCP. Sir, ang station na sir natin, meron po tayo naka-station sa Paranas and we also have a station in Santa Rita. Gaano po kalayo yung Santa Rita at Paranas doon sa pinakadulo ng 69 KB ninyo? Gaano kalayo? Ilang kilometro po? Yung total length niya is 180 pero po yung from, depende po kung saan po tayo mag-start ng count kasi umikot po yan eh. Eh, alam ko, alam Apo. ko po. So, ang, ang tinatanong ko lang ang sagutin mo, so, gaano kalayo yon 180? Yung the whole stretch of the line. Mula doon sa, ulitin ko yung tanong ko, doon sa area wherein doon naka-standby yung mga tao ninyo, mga line personnel na nagpapatrol tuwing may fault yung linya, gaano kalayo doon sa pinakadulo ng 69 KB? Yung distance. Yung sa from Paranas po sir is 108 okay. kilometer and another one po is uh, uh, around 90, 82 oh. kilometers. So, bakit hindi kayo naglagay ng mga substation doon sa area? Ikalat ninyo kasi yung mga lineman ninyo para kung yung fault locator ninyo ay sinasabi na 60 kilometer from substation Imagine 60 kilometers pa ang tatakbuhin ng mga lineman papunta doon sa tinuturo na ano. Whereas kung may mga tao kayo dyan, every 30 kilometers, ay mabilis yun. So, kung hindi po yun, huwag kayong magtipid ng suba. Sir, meron din po kami palang station sa Boronggan. Hindi po ang sagot sa sitwasyon. Yeah. Make a standby line personnel, kahit iskilita lang, limang tao, hindi naman po... Bilyon-bilyon po yung dinideclare ninyo na kita every year sa, sa stock market. Bilyon-bilyon-bilyon po. Tapos kahit, kahit magdagdag malang kayo ng, ano, ng 25 personnel, 
ikalat nyo, tig lima-lima. O di, nachap-chap natin yung 180. Pag may fault, nandun na sila malapit. Hindi yung galing pa doon sa ano, malapit pa yun. Ikaw ba yung ano doon, yung station manager doon? Uh, ako po yung sa district, uh, meron po kami yung transmission line pa. Oo. Tignan mo. Sa NGCP, kindly, ano, convey this to the top management. Ganong kahaba na linya, hindi pa po pwede na isang grupo lang ng line man po ako, nine years, line man po ako, nine years. So, umarong ko po lahat yan. Ko po lahat yan. Thank you, Noted po. Professor Noted po. Lineman Dagoo. Yan. Okay. Yes, Honorable Libanan. Uh, let's go back to the issue then. Uh, maraming bisis na yung ahas yung reason dyan eh. <laughs> yung uh, pag tinatanong, ahas yung cause. Pero siguro, linisin nyo rin yung mga puno na, na malapit sa mga wires ninyo para hindi makiat ng mga ahas. At uh, sa, uh, sa transmission lines ninyo, maintenance siguro ang kailangan dyan para hindi mag-brown uh, out. Lalo ngayon, ang dami nang magkipista sa amin. Ang laki ng problema ninyo pag may kumukurat sa doon, biglang nag-brown out. <laughs> uh, yung isa pala doon sa barangay uh, sa Giwan. Sa Giwan may nagpista doon, nag-brown out. Lahat na panis yung kanilang mga pagkain. Oh, ganda min babayaran niyo pag uh, hindi niyo ito inayos. Nagsisimula na ngayon yung mga pista sa 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 buong Samar. Uh, kaya uh, i-maintain niyo nang maayos po ito. Yes, Honorable Green. Sir, I have, I'm sorry this is uh not the parliamentary procedure. I would like to ask a question. So, ang kay Congressman Dago, for example, yung isang reason for one block out was Yung Saranggola. Then the next day was the... Wala pa na Nyog. Ahas. And then... Nyog. Kidlap. Bakit ang iibon? Ganyan baka... Kung dagok, is that how fragile our grid system is? Ganon the... talaga. Kung gusto nating masolve yan, in the case of Dinagat, palaging paniki. So... Hinahabaan ko yung cross arm. Normally, sa distribution, 8 feet lang yan. E ginagawa kong 12 para makalat yung ano. So ngayon, pag gano'n ang paniki, hindi niya maabot yung isang linya or insulate mo yan. In the case of NGCP, 336 po yung conductor natin, 336.4 MCM. Ngayon, kung i-insulated natin yan, napakamahal po noon. So hindi kaya nung tao. So specifically, uh, Honorable Dago, that's also for electric cooperatives. Alas lahat ng mga lines natin, yes. uninsulated. So pag i-insulate natin, sobrang mahal. But also, ay, uh, total pumunta na tayo dyan tungkol sa line, Honorable Libanon. I, I think one of the things since... Uh, electric co-op nga ang uh, may handle niyan. Since you guys are being hit by storms 18 times a year, twin, you should already come up with a plan of uh, underground ano na, power lines. I know it's expensive, pero kahit pa konti-konti, umpisa natin. So, so instead of building, building again the same thing over and over again, let's build back better. Tapos, I-spread out nyo na lang for what, 20-30 years yung cost para ma maliit lang yung pass on uh, i -ano natin sa ano mga MCOs. So I think that's one of the things that should be looked into by SMLCO para medyo mabuwas-buwasan natin yung yung problema. At namang problema, I'm sure rin ng NEA, mainly because pag kayo tinamaan ng bagyo, kailangan nyo ng pera, tatakbo tayo sa NEA, kulang-kulang rin naman ng... Sir. Oh, ang funding natin for mga emergency cases. So I think uh, especially to most of the electric co-op co ops that are being hit by uh, storms a lot of times during the year. I think we already have to look into building back better. I'm sure there are a lot of private institutions who would want to to fund uh, mga ganyang classing ano projects. Mr. Chair Yes, since uh, we already discussed Neya, I would just, I would like to ask Neya, no, how does the uh, Isamelco perform, no, as far as the categorization, yung karilang uh, uh, system loss? Please uh, give us uh, some uh, insights or input, uh, Mr. Chair and the honorable members of this committee. 
in so far as NAI is concerned, Isamelco has been rated triple A. It is, in so far as its uh, collection efficiency is concerned, thanks to the consumers, it's collecting 99.12%. The system loss is quite low at 6.37%. It is also compliant in so far as the frequency and duration of interruptions and has uh, totally accomplished uh, barangay energization as well as serving 100% of the potential consumer connections, sir. Thank you. Uh, follow up question, Mr. Chair. You heard the uh, NIA, who is our supervisory uh, department na magandang performance ng Isamelco. So ano ba nangyari? Bakit tumaas ang kuryente? Any input, uh, Attorney Mayo? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. In so far as the increase in the power cost is prevalent not only in eastern summer, but probably the rest of the electric cooperatives because of the rise in the price of coal as uh, Indonesia the main exporter has constricted its supply. And as, me as mentioned a while ago by the general manager, the vessels which uh, carry the fuel also have to incur additional fuel cost on account of the increased uh, cost of crude. Follow up, Mr. Craig. So you think the contract of uh, Isamelco with the call, okay lang ba sa iyo, 2041? What can NEA do para matulungan naman ng mga electric cooperatives since NEA is the supervisory agency that uh, uh, protecting or, or uh, overseeing the 121 electric cooperatives? Ano magagawa NEA na matulungan sila through ERC and through NGCT or to transfer anything? Total interagency naman to. Kayo ang dapat uh, tumulong sa kanda. Mr. Chair, the, the administrator has uh, been in constant uh, dialogue with the department as well as the commission, the DOE and the ERC to help the electric co-ops directly and indirectly the consumers. In particular, Mr. Chair, I would like to point out that this contract of Isamelco with GN Power is not confined to Eastern Summer alone. This is a result of an aggregated contract in the company of several other electric co-ops within the region. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the last question, Mr. Chair. So when they, when they made the aggregation, so it favors all the electric cooperatives within the neighboring uh, provinces right, on that um, besides area, am I right? That is correct, Mr. Chair. At the time of the uh, perfection of the contract, it was about the it was the lowest available price. If I were to ask you, uh, Attorney Mayo from Nea, the three something, di ba magandang uh, price yon for the next twenty years? Very good price, sir. So how can we blame Mang Isamelco? Wherein, if I were the GM, I'll do the same thing. Na tama yung three pesos because that time more yan. tama. It's all electric cooperative are coal dependent, right? Most of the uh, electric co-ops are dependent on coal-fired uh, plants, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank Mr. you, Chairman. Honorable <coughs> Yes, Honorable Libana. Just uh, I would like just to point out some things in, in that interpolation. One is that. What is different in Eastern Samar is that we have a renewable energy source, which is the Taft Hydro, which Isamelco can also tap so that we can lessen the price. Am I correct? If the conditions are favorable, as already mentioned by the provider, Mr. Chair, and uh, depending on the availability of these favorable conditions, then that would benefit the consumers of SMLCO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. B because right now it is available and uh, the president assured us. Actually, they, they met a lot of times already and we were even there when we 
you had this groundbreaking of the solar power project. Second is that uh, uh, <clears throat> what what makes the problem in Isamelco is that the frequent brownouts and the and the low voltage. So even if you rate it with that uh, ninety nine percent collection, you you just can see how how diligent Eastern Samarinos are in paying their dues, then it, it shall be equated with performance by, by all sectors. Nakikita ninyo, kahit mahirap yung probinsya, nagbabayad. 99.12% uh, yung, yung payment. Di ba? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm glad that we had this meeting because finally we're able to to see kung saan ang may problema at kung saan tayo pwedeng kumilos. Uh, malaking problema natin ito. Hindi tama po si Attorney Mayo na hindi lang ito dito pero sa buong bansa. Pero as of now, mag, mag, maraming mga probinsya na magkakaroon din ng mga renewable energies. Kasi maraming nag-apply na ng solar power ng hydroelectric power. So, uh, hopefully, ma matutugunan natin ang mga problema ito. At uh, with the advent of the amendment of the PR law, uh, mas gaganda yung servisyo natin. But right now, may mga immediate solutions tayo na pwede natin gawin. Huwag na natin hintayin. Uh, kaya, Mr. Chairman, uh, in behalf of uh, the minority black or peace part list and the people of the whole island of Samar na pare-parehas yung dinaraanan po namin. Nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong kumite at saka sa lahat ng dumalo dito na nakipag-ambag sa inyong nalalamat para mapa, mapabuti natin ang serbisyo sa taong bayan. Papasalamat po kami. At kami po yung umaasa kay Attorney John Mike, Jose Michael Edwin Amansio at saka sa Isamelco Board President. Mr. Ronaldo Herna, na uh, kung maaari magkaroon tayo ng kaagarang uh, paghingi ng Certificate of uh, exemption. exemption sa uh, Department of Energy. Uh, si Yusik ka rin, napakasipag po niya, napakagaling at napakasipag. Pinuntahan po niya uh, sa Eastern Samar at uh, nag-enjoy siya doon. Ang ganda daw ng probinsya ng Eastern Samar at, na, at napakaganda pa. Kaya gawin po natin ito. Ang NGCP naman, inaasahan po namin kayo na gawin nyo yung nararapat. Ayaw namin na ganitong magkaharap-harap tayo at maglilecture sa inyo si Congressman Sir Hilda Gook na parang mas magaling pa sa inyo. Baka palitan na lang kayo dyan sa NGCP. Siya na lang magpatakbo niyan. Uh, uh, yun, ang, yun ang malas ninyo dahil uh, <laughs> may magaling tayo dito. At saka si Congressman Presley, napakagaling din po niyan. Uh, uh, they, they, both of them are representing the power sectors in Congress. Parehas na, nasa, nasa minority. Kaya sa lahat ng uh, member ng committee, Mr. Chairman, kami po ito sa puso nagpapasalamat. Of course, uh, si, nandito ang ating Vice Chair, si... Arni Pintibel yan. Nandito rin sa atin para tumulong sa atin. Arni Pintibel yan. Hindi. Hindi yung isang Arni. Hindi yung Arni. Yes, Honorable Gary. Yeah. Um, with the exemption, I think they need to apply before we can grant it. Di ba? Yeah. <laughs> Parang wala yun. Apply na po kayo bukas before the... Before Friday, ma'am, kaya mo nang ibigay yan, di ba? Uh, may, may moratorium, pero at least you submit it already when we left it. <laughs> and then the review of their contracts, uh, Chair, um, the Power Bureau will be in contact with the co to schedule a, a visit to the co-op so they can review your contracts. Uh, pwede nating maayos, uh, sir. But yeah, we'll... Uh, no, we'll uh, um, coordinate with the ano na lang, uh, Mr. Chair with the GM para for whatever they need. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Galin. Uh, Honorable Chair, Begot, uh, yes. Summary of, uh, just a summary yeah. of recommendations. Yeah. Hindi na po kailangan legislation nito. Uh, Una-una, nasabi na ni Yosik Garin, 
Yung mga ang, ang i-paremayan ko yung mga nire-recommend ng committee, huwag na kayong maghintay na ma- may submit yung report sa plenary kasi pwede na nating gawin to on the part of GNGCP. Jim, uh, in writing, you request NGCP na maglagay ng mga tao doon sa area na yan para on record nag-request na kayo. Hindi nila ginagawa eh. So mag-request na kayo. Copy for this lahat ng mayors at saka si minority leader na kailangan kahit lima-limang line man lang doon sa mga area para mahati-hati yung patrol mabilis. Then, uh, yun, yung application sa certificate of uh, exemption, uh, then on the part of the NGCP, we I recommend na paggagawa kayo ng TDP, lahat ng mga 69 KB area na uh, forested area, i-convert nyo na na-insulated yung portion na yun. Hindi naman lahat. Yung kasi uh, tinitik note halimbawa uh, sa distribution system namin tinitik note ko yung specific structure na palaging inaakyatan ng ahas. Kadalasan kasi nakakonfine lang yan sa isang area yung nandoon sila nakatira yung paniki, yung yung mga daga, yung mga daga. Yung area na yon convert na yan into insulated or ano, habaan ninyo yung cross arm sa 69 para hindi mag-abot yung dalawang ano, yung linya pag umakyat sila. Hindi na kailangan na just lesion yun eh. Uh, ano lang naman yun? Yung uh, 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 may, may tawag ako dyan eh. So, common sense. Common sense. Yun, oh. Common sense lang yun. Hindi na nga kailangan na engineer yun. Pwede lineman na yung makapag-isip niyan eh. Kasi yung ginagamit ko ngayon, yung experience ko lang naman as lineman. So, uh, yung mga yun, then on the part of the ARC or DOE, ay yung template nga ng power supply agreement. Lagyan yun na kasi ng mga basic, yung walk away provision, yung, yung sa CRA, paano i-recover yun, yung sa fuel, dapat si ARC may cap. magkano lang yung ano yun. <laughs> doon sa sa ERC I think DOE uh, uh, ito yung masakit once the NGCP filed their TDP kasama sa Marnila on that particular period pag in po yung Marnila nangungulikta na po sila sa cost ng TDP na yan kami po ang inuto sa nila na <laughs> nangungulikta ngayon Pag hindi po nila na-implement yung project na yan, the question ERC is, are you monitoring saan napunta yung pira na, na nire-remit ng mga distribution utilities? Nandyan lang ba talaga yun? Kasi hindi pa na-implement yung project. And we are talking of billions here. Billions po yan. Eh, kahit ilagay mo lang yan sa bangko, sa interest pa lang. So, nihado ka na nga dahil hindi na-implement yung project, may kumita pa dito. I'm not saying in GCP yun. Hindi ko lang alam kung saan yun. Basta that is the reality at present rules, mga existing issuances, na that is allowed, that is allowed na nangungulikta ka na hindi pa na-implement yung project. Kadalasan kasi sabi ni NGCP, may problema kami sa right of way. Then for the record, I am saying, ERC, huwag niyong i-approve, it should be a prerequisite doon sa TDP, yung right of way. Pag hindi clear yung right of way, sa line section na yan, yung isama, saya approve ninyo. Kasi may problema pa eh. Punahin mo na yung right of way, hindi yung pangungulikta. Problema sa atin, in-approve, pinakulikta, hindi naman ma-implement. So, yung mga yon Marami pa yan. Uh, we will talk that at the DOE on Thursday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you, Honorable Dago. Dago. Honorable Dago. Dago. Jesus. Thank you, Mr. Parang Chair. Parang napansin ko, Mr. Chair, pinuri lang yung mga power pa. with regard to ancillary service and the regulatory reserve. So, kailangan tayo submit para makita natin talaga. Kasi isipin mo, kung di tayo nagbabayad, bawas sa ano yun, sa presyo ng kuryente. Yung transmission line, ma'am, pag embedded sa inyo, bawas at least 150 rin yun. Sayang, right. pag pinagsama-sama mo yun, Mr. Chair, mababa ang presyo ng kuryente. Mm. So, it's high time talaga, Mr. Chair, no? na talagang ang NGCP, hindi lang tayo puro kita, 
Tama na yung 20 billion a year yung kita. Bawasan lang natin konti. Ilook nyo na ang Eastern Summer at Northern Summer. It will cost you around 500 million. What's 500 million compared to 20 billion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Honorable Presley. So, there being no other concern, I'd just like to thank our members and the resource persons for coming here today. Kila Honorable uh, Minority Leader Libanan sa Power Puff Boys. Siyempre po kay Yusek Sharon Garin. Alam mo ba, alam niyo ba po, may no, hindi man lang namin in-invite si Sharon, but uh, sabi niya, kailangan kong naandito at uh, concern itong uh, Eastern Samar. Yan. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, salamat din kay uh, Son of Epira, si Honorable Arnie Fentibella, and uh, definitely thank you to the resolution of Honorable Libanan because, because, uh, because of this hearing, marami po tayong nakita mga bagay-bagay na pwede po nating uh, ma-discuss at ma-tackle po during the amendments to the IPRA sa ikabubuti ng lahat po ng ating mga kababayan. So, is there that favorite motion? Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Seconded. It has been moved and seconded that the meeting be adjourned. There being no objection, the meeting of the Committee on Energy is hereby adjourned. Maraming maraming salamat po.